<laughs> oh, hey, we should uh, start the podcast, right? Yeah, yeah we probably well, should. Well, you know, the, the funny thing, though, is... It started. Is, it's a weather podcast. Yeah, no, I, guess, I didn't I got, do the I intro. Got a, I got right? a pretty cool announcement, too. So when we're, when we're ready, when we're talking. Okay, okay. Well, hello, and welcome to the 8th Planet Dust... Fuck, I knew that would happen eventually. <laughs> <laughs> when the tiredness we're hits. not even in double digits yet we're not even in the double digits yet no i said planet destiny is a destiny community oh. podcast oh, <laughs> i didn't even yeah. notice i didn't even, I didn't notice. even notice. Yeah. I noticed i noticed i noticed oh my gosh <laughs> hello oh, and so welcome I, yeah. yeah redo <laughs> redo 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 let's, Starting let's start with the keep it in all right. Okay. i'm keeping that in hello and welcome to the eighth destiny community podcast uh yeah. Uh this is gonna be the one titled the one about skill based matchmaking, because normally I don't think of the of. titles until I've already uploaded the entire thing. Mm -hmm. But this time I have a very sneaking suspicion that that's what we're gonna be talking about for a portion of the Yo, podcast. It Potentially dominated all of it. <laughs> the discussion for the entire week. Like it started last weekend when You're right. you know, mm -hmm. all of a sudden the bungee forums were just covered with it. It was like the first page was all posts about get rid of skill based matchmaking. And then Deej responded on the post, and then he responded again in the weekly update. It's been incredible. Like the community is just, all of a sudden, it's just a fire topic. There's been a lot more YouTube content about it too. People bringing up subjects of on it and talking pros and cons sure. and mostly cons and all that. So obviously, Bungie was forced to talk about it in a way. Yeah. 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 Well, I, I, I did some YouTube content about it because I was prompted by the the post on like what happened on the budgie forums. I mean, it just brought it to the forefront, and like, I felt like it it just needed to be talked about, you know. Yeah. And I think that we should talk about it on the show too. <laughs> well, let's have a discussion about. Uh, I think it, I think it was. A, I think it was. Uh, uh, and and I I almost think it was too dominant. That it um, it it squashed a bunch of other conversations that were going on about the in the community that I thought were really good to have, and I would have wanted to see more people uh, um, be a part of. Mm. But Pope, so, but they've yeah they've laid out the specific things. Clearly, uh, clearly we're dreaming about some stuff, wouldn't you say? <laughs> my, no, uh, but I mean my point. My point. My point is simply that I. Um, I would have wanted the topics on the forums and Reddit to be more conversations about the tournament that just happened and mm -hmm. um, discussions oh, yeah. about Agreed. pros and cons of it and mm -hmm. what they saw and the futures of it. Like, yeah. I think if more people were focused on that conversation, I'm not saying anything about the topic of skill-based matchmaking or the update or anything. I'm just lamenting that we didn't have an opportunity to hear the communities really, their community really flesh out that topic. Mm -hmm. um, yep. And mm -hmm. uh, I felt like, if there's something that we could talk about, I know it does. It's not the topic du jour, um, but it is something that I would like to kind of delve into as a group and as a topic mm -hmm. tonight. Mm -hmm. This was interesting, right? Because it was the four v four tournament, right? Yeah, right, mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. But we'll get into it. I just wanted. I was just commenting on the. There was also a ride along for the raid this week. There yeah. was. I don't know if it you guys fun. got to see, but those are always interesting. Uh, I know Pope, you really love the those content. You especially oh, yeah. love them when you're in them. <laughs> um i uh i messaged i, I messaged Deej, uh um and said hey um any chance i can be in the uh the forge or not, not forge uh, um archon's forge um he hinted at archon's forge ride along mm -hmm. uh I, I totally want to do that because i suck so bad at destiny right now that i i, I think that um i think that's the only thing i can handle <laughs> well would you say that you're a casual right now no, yourself. not at all. No? no, not at all. Um, I would not bring up those words or no? mention anything. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys want to jump into it? You want to just jump right into skill based matchmaking and or as we should put it, we should put it as casual based matchmaking. Honestly, because that's mm. apparently what it is, right? <laughs> oh, I'm gonna have some right? opinions about this, and oh, I'm boy. ready. I'm ready, but I'm gonna. Um, I need to get ready. I need to limber up here a little. You need limber to stretch up a little bit. bit. Stretch right, a bit so before this the, topic. To uh, begin, why don't we describe what the two terms mean? This we're gonna well, call them. Okay. We're well, gonna refer to these a lot. Well, hold up. Do you want to talk about the actual um, this week at Bungie first, though? So we yes. know. Yes. So why don't we, have we a reference just explain what skill based matchmaking context. and connection based matchmaking? Yeah, yeah. Are. You're absolutely no, right. You're just, absolutely right. Okay. So can, the, there are two 
schools of thought. Connection-based matchmaking and skill-based matchmaking are different ways of connecting players um, for competitive multiplayer shooters or any kind of competitive multiplayer event. And what they do is they take an algorithm. Uh, skill-based matchmaking is going to try and group players up by skill. So you're going to need to get uh, more players in matches that are of similar, similar skill levels. Where connection matchmaking is going to take uh, players that have good connections who may not be of similar skills. Uh, the two don't really exist well to, together because one of them, if you have more skill-based matchmaking than you have connection-based matchmaking, that's going to detract from the connection. If you have more connection, opinion at this point. If you have more connection, uh, then you're going to take away from the, some of the skill-based matchmaking. So you you can combine the two, but the two mm-hmm. are two different things, right? They are yeah. two different things. Um, so. While you say you might want to lower skill-based matchmaking or raise skill-based matchmaking, skill-based matchmaking is skill-based matchmaking. You might want to add more connection into it, but you know th- these are what we're going to be talking about. CBMM is connection-based matchmaking. SBMM is skill-based. Yep. That's yes. what we're going to be talking about a lot tonight. Yes. And I think we should go over the uh, This Week at Bungie then, or at least that yeah, section. Yeah, let's go, go over the article and what was said and the question and answers. Yeah, because Bungie yeah. laid out some specific details to us to okay. basically tell uh, us, yeah. Well, some let's, let's some vague, some vaguely specific like, details. The, well, okay, as, hold yeah. on. As a as a preface to this, Bungie will never ever no developer will never ever give exact specifics to how their technology works to match players together, because chances are this is stuff that they're trying to not keep secret, but it's like proprietary to, you know, their own systems, and mm-hmm. they want this to be unique to theirs and there's a bunch of other legal stuff that they have to do to they also make don't it. want players to be able to exploit it yeah exactly like if you know exactly, exactly. how it works it's gonna that may allow you to exploit it exactly so do you remember the just... ranked playlist in uh halo 3 mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. it's to what patrick was talking about yeah. the information was communicated or leaked out somehow and um people were able to boost accounts to 50 and they were able to game the system Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, and it happened with many other games. World of Warcraft, for one, arena, or War, World of Warcraft arenas, uh, very easy. It used to be very easy to kind of game the ranking system to get Gladiator rank with very little actual effort. So, um, in the weekly update this week, uh, the topic over the past you know seven seven so days in the community has been skill based matchmaking and its removal. Um, so in this update, it looks like they. At least, I believe Deej wrote this. Um, yeah, I believe Deej yeah, wrote this. Yeah, written by Deej, and then the, you know, some of this okay. stuff was given by the matchmaking people. Okay, given by the people that actually designed it. So mm-hmm. it looks like the goal is to just kind of educate the community on how uh, the matchmaking system works and their goals behind it. Um, yeah, so when it comes to matchmaking, here are the design goals. Provide you with a clean connection to your fellow players. I'm just reading directly off the weekly update. Keep the time you spend in orbit between matches to a minimum and set a match between you and your worthy opponent. And then it goes in that order. And here's how it goes about finding you a match. First, they identify a pool of available players with a good connection to you. And then within that pool, they choose players closely matched to your personal skill rating. If they can't find if they can't find players within that pool, then they widen the variance in skill. And if that doesn't work, then they expand the search again with more variance in connection quality. Once enough players are selected, they break them out into hopefully equally skilled teams. I added the word hopefully in there. Um, <laughs> and it's uh, none of this actually factors into Trials of Osiris. Matchmaking, you're mm-hmm. matched entirely based on good connections and similar scorecards there. Uh, and then the one small last paragraph at the end of this, that is a gross simplification of some very complicated engineering. Mm-hmm. To summarize, connection quality is always the highest priority factor in Destiny matchmaking. Okay, uh, let me see the first value. It's the first criteria for the search and, we're, and the last value we're willing to compromise to set the match. When possible, they introduce you to opponents that will be put up to a respectable fight, but not the expense of a good connection. Hmm. Um... Okay, so mm. all that has been placed before us now. Uh, those, that is what Bungie has said regarding this. Now, do you want to go through the questions and answers as well before? Yeah, we... I, again. Um, yeah, because the private said. the private match answer was. Uh, yeah, I'll I'll 
question. I'll get to that. I'll, I'll get to that because I have some, something to say about that specifically. Um, so there are a bunch of questions that are like a FAQ of matchmaking. Yeah. Why are you teaming me up with weaker teammates? Uh, they favor connection quality over skill ratings. If they favored skill over connection, you'd be more likely to have people closer to your skill level on both teams. If you want better teammates, they're waiting for you in the recruitment forums. And there's a link to like clans and hmm. recruitments. Why can't you match fire teams against fire teams? If they, I com actually completely understand this answer. Yeah, yeah. If we waited for perfectly weighted teams to find each other, you might spend more time in orbit than in the game. Fire teams can still do and still match up against one another, but fast matchmaking is the priority. Uh, that's that's great. The only time we, I mean, just to personal experience, the only time we ever see, we ever see like six man teams against six man teams is in Iron Banner when there are more teams running together. Yeah. Than yeah. Nor than spread across all the playlists, so like that's understandable. What is Destiny's network tick rate? Combat damage is sampled at thirty hertz or thirty times per second. We track and network how your shots land on every frame of gameplay you can see. You receive updates on systems like scoring or ammo spawn timers from an activity host at 10 hertz, 10 times per second. Um, hertz and tick rates are a big thing in more competitive shooters. Uh, Counter-Strike and Overwatch, for example, use 60 or 120 uh, tick rates. So 60 times per second or 120 times per second 60 for uh, leads to... Yeah. yeah, 60 for Overwatch, 120 for Counter-Strike. Counter -Strike, yeah. uh, it leads to, um, you know, it, it feels very responsive. Like you shoot someone, it registers. There's You don't really get that kind of lag that's in Destiny. Yep. Um, do you try to force players into a 50% win-loss ratio? Nope. As we've stated, your personal performance is a factor in, in the Guardians you end up confronting in battle, but we do nothing to artificially influence win streaks or alterly or or alter individual player statistics. And the very last question: Why can't I just relax and enjoy some matches with my friends? We introduced private matches to the Crucible with the launch of Destiny: Rise of Iron, so that you could do just that. Take matchmaking into your own hands and make the Crucible what you want it to be. That was quite possibly the worst possible answer you could. The worst give answer. Give the future to that is question. in your hands. The worst, <laughs> the worst. Hey guys, I, um, I'm interested in enjoying some matches with my friends. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and load into a private match right now, and we're in a private match and there's no one there. <laughs> I know that I, I'm being really fucking condescending right now, but seriously. But that, that was condescending. That like was it felt condescending. condescending. It was like, hey, you it's the same thing as like, hey, you want to have fun in Crucible? Go play strikes. Go play private matches. Yeah. The crucible ain't for fun. We don't have fun around here. Yeah. You crazy. It's like I was like, um super competitive 10 tick rate. <laughs> we're talking we were talking about skill-based matchmaking, which is something that matchmaking does. So why are we even talking about private matches? Right. That shouldn't even come into the conversation. The whole the whole that question. I think that's an argument for why players want more connection-based matchmaking. It's one yeah. of the arguments. Yeah, so it, it was a re a rebuttal against one of those arguments. Yeah, because a lot of what what I hear a lot because I made a video about it and I asked specifically for constructive answers because that's what Bungie wanted and that's how we're going to see change. So the comments of my the video is just like amazing with just a bunch of constructive stuff. And I see a lot of the time that it's like I'm a really high skill player. I want to play with my low skill friends. They don't have a good time because they're getting matched against my skill level. And that's kind of where that question came from. Is like why can't I load in with two or three of my friends who aren't as good as me and just have a good time. It's going to be sweaty and awful and they're going to get their butt kicked, which isn't fun for them. And that's what Bungie is also trying to avoid with their skill-based matchmaking settings. So I that question and that answer, I don't think that answer was anywhere near touching what the question was trying to nowhere get at. Nowhere near. Yeah. Agreed. It's weird because everything that they mentioned in that about how they're supposedly approaching matchmaking is... It's either a complete lie or the population is so low that red bars happen to be the normal for when you mm -hmm. load into games. And you just happen to play with people in South America because yep. the population is so low all what the time. What about this Tefty says lie to you? The, 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 way it, uh, the way they present it, that they're focusing on connection. Their number one and most important thing is connection. If that's the case, then why is it just about every game... Uh, like I said, it, it's like people, there's either a red bar or uh, the, the green bars have like a little edge off the top and there's clearly delays. Like it, 
it doesn't even feel like a uh, a 10 tick rate. It feels like there's like a 500 millisecond update every now and then with how the like damage numbers are responding and so on and so forth. It just, I don't buy it. And, and also the fact that like last night I was playing and I decided to solo queue and we ended up having several games where it was 4v4 and 5v5. And then we finally uh, went up against a team in South America, or actually I think it was Central America, that was a six-man squad. They had two red bars on the team because obviously the connections are going to be strained anyways with peer-to-peer -peer right mm -hmm. there. And we had five people on my solo queue team the whole time, five people. So the question is, was there really not another person queuing in control at, I think, 8 p.m. Pacific time? Mm-hmm. Like, that's that's... That's what my issue is. It's like, are you yeah. telling me there's no one in the entire, not even, not even just the West Coast, but no one in the entire of the USA that is yeah. playing control? There's not 11 people. I don't. It doesn't add up. It just, yeah, it doesn't really make sense. It doesn't make sense, and that's why I feel like when I read that, I feel like whoever is uh, is saying the information to Deej on what to say, I I just don't feel like they've done the research and looked at the numbers to be like. Hey, maybe something is actually problematic in the matchmaking code. Maybe there really is a bug in there that says we're valuing skill over everything else. It just looks like we went connection, but it's getting like there's some sort of redundancy that's wiping that out of the code base and going for skill. Because that's what it feels like to me. Mm -hmm. Whenever and this has been the way it's been that way for uh, easily since August. Easily. It's been a, it's been a long time. Yeah. yeah, it's been a long time. So. <clears throat> I don't see them. I don't see this as a lie. I see this as how how they they are trying to get this system to work. And in my opinion, it's an insanely difficult problem to solve. And I don't envy Bungie's task here totally. because they've got they're trying to combine those two things again: the skill based matchmaking and then the the connection based matchmaking. And it doesn't really matter to me like which is prioritized over the other. The the two. It's like having two people with different goals, right? And they both have to cooperate to get to achieve something, but they both have this uh, a different end product, right? The different a different end goal, and they're always going to be fighting each other. And so it, it doesn't really matter like which is prioritized over the other. It, the, the two are always going to be clashing. Mm -hmm. And I don't know that you can ever have like when I when I go onto the Bungie forums and I see something that says just get rid of skill based matchmaking. I don't I don't really see that as an answer because mm -hmm. it's gonna work. That that might make like the top five percent of players, the top most skilled players in PvP really happy, but like the bottom twenty percent are gonna be really unhappy because you know they come in maybe they're brand new to Destiny. They're oh, I'm gonna try out Crucible for a hot minute. Oh my God, everybody's fucking awesome at this game. I got my ass kicked over and over again. I couldn't even kill anybody. Mm -hmm. You know, like without any kind of skill based matchmaking, you just make you make you make it so difficult on new players or less skilled players. And like it was brought up today, like, no, you're not gonna get real craftier. You're not gonna get, you know, loomy in your in your lobby every time, but it doesn't really matter how skilled somebody is if you're not skilled. If they're a, a little more skilled than you, it's going to feel like they're a lot more skilled than you, right? Like if you're constantly getting beat up on, it doesn't matter who's on the other end of the sticks. It's just it's just not an enjoyable time. If you're always getting mercied, it's not an enjoyable time. So this relationship between skill-based matchmaking and connection-based matchmaking is very difficult. And frankly, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter where they put that slider, right? If they slide it more toward connection-based matchmaking or they slide it more toward skill-based. They're always going to piss off a certain amount of the population. There's no one place you can put that and everybody's happy, right? True. So this is like a, this is an impossibly difficult problem to solve because you're always going to have people upset about the priorities of skill-based over connection-based or vice versa. There's no way you can make everybody happy on that. So, so I, I'm, I'm, I don't know if I can, I can go with you on their lying about this. I think that the system is fighting each other I think this is how they they see it as being designed, and you know, I don't, I don't, I don't know how to code. I don't, I don't have any uh, idea. Saying it's designed one way and having it ap actually implemented one way are two separate things. You can design for whatever, but if it isn't actually implemented in that method, then it's not going to work. And the results in my but it mind, does work most of the time. Do, well, okay, from my perspective, as somebody who plays a lot, um, yeah, 
I feel like it's it's skill based matchmaking versus connection. Why? I mean, I'm in a po I'm in a very populated area. There's a lot of people that play in the West Coast. I should yeah. be getting mostly West Coast players with good connections. They're saying right. they're favoring connection. Right. Mm -hmm. But yeah. skill based matchmaking is going to hurt you who plays all the time much more than it's going to hurt somebody who plays, let's say, you know, a couple hours a week, right? Who's not as skilled as you, Tefty, mm -hmm. right? It's going to hurt you because there's less players who are at the same skill level as you, right? Whereas right. down, like a new player, there's many, many people down at that level of but, skill level. But they're saying it's not actually in effect. They're saying that the skill well, No, they're saying that it, that it is in effect. It's just, it's not the first thing they prioritize, but it is in there. But that, I guess that's what I'm saying. They can't actually pull a pool of people that have good connections in my area and then decide if the if the skills are there from that and then weigh the teams like that because because like i said uh it it as the games progress it just widens it globally suddenly you're playing people from yeah. like africa possibly you know like legitimately people have come to my chat and be like yeah. yeah i'm from africa I'm like yeah it it keeps widening that net it doesn't seem like after a couple games it just keeps going and going and going then the, the matches get laggier and laggier you know, that's why I think yeah. there's, there's got to be a bug somewhere in there. Like, I don't think they intentionally want to do that because they're saying it in the in the weekly update. So I don't think that they're intentionally trying to lie. I just feel like the results from somebody in my position who plays a lot and pays attention to these things, I see different results. I don't see the same thing. And I don't think that the population is so low that that's just what we have right now. Yeah. Well, gonna, it doesn't I'm, seem to me that I would agree with you. It does not seem to be like connection is priority one. It seems like skill is priority one to me. Mm -hmm. Like if I if I were to make this list of how I thought it looked when I played, I would say skill is the most, you know, first we identify a pool of available players with the same skill as you. Exactly. <laughs> like that's what my number one would have been. That's but what it feels like. It it doesn't really matter which is first and which is second, because the two are just gonna fight each other anyway. Yeah. Uh Pope, you have been kind of quiet during this time. Would you like to Care to Before step, Patrick step, unleashes step holy in, hell. <laughs> step into the conversation some. I'm saying yeah, quiet. Um, I, I guess yeah. I guess where I want to start is that like I think that I've been around this community for a long time and in the Halo community, and I feel like right off the bat, Bungie has always been listening. So mm -hmm. right off the bat, I wanna I wanna start off by saying that. Um so maybe maybe some players in the new to the community don't you know don't feel like the the game developers listening or not, but here's something that I want to also say, is that when I read the weekly update, maybe my particular um, experience of the game is different than yours or somebody else's, which it is. It sounds like Tefty because I don't have the same problems that you're explaining, so I have a different perspective. On my how on the games that I have than you do, but I'm also going to give them, I don't know the the benefit of the doubt. You know, to be honest with you, they've they've they spent this game has been I don't know updated. Think about any other game you've played and how many times this game has been updated since it's been out. Is there any other game that's been updated this many times in your in your history of of playing um, games in the in in, in what a two-year life cycle. I mean, yeah. you mean expansions, <laughs> expansions and stuff like what? To, to be well, if we're honest, talking yeah. about if we're talking about like the the huge array of games that we've played, unless we're talking very specifically about console shooters, even then I could say that you know other games get updated. In fairness, even frequently. like a Call of Duty for the year it's relevant gets frequently updated. They get and a they lot of patches, it. and then yeah. they get the DLC and. You know, then so, they add so new Destiny's skins. So Destiny's been updated guns. over 45 times. Yeah, yeah but like, oh, that's Reach. over the course of two years. Yeah, and Reach got all right. title so updates all the time. So all I'm saying is that in a position where we are... I guess I don't want to get into the argument. It's It seems like a slippery slope, like a a swamp that you walk into when you say that um, that they need to do this or that with, with, with the game. You can talk, I feel like I'm confident enough to talk about my perspective or my position or what I see in the game. Sure. But then I also need to put in the other piece, which is that 
there are good ways, and it's something that I'm um, I'm disappointed. Not disappointed. God, that's not the right word. Uh, it's unfortunate that the that the community is focusing on negative ways of expressing their frustration, and maybe it's because they feel like Bungie isn't listening, but I think that they are, and um, that they're they're working on a very complicated problem. And they're trying to adjust the the game to make it meet this criteria. So rather than say like we tweak this lever, we tweak this lever, we we tweak this lever, we tweak this lever, they're saying that this is their goal, right? This is their goal and their criteria for for matchmaking, and that's what they're heading towards. Um, I don't think that they're there yet, and I but I want to focus on the community saying, hey, look. There's a place where they're pulling feedback from, and I don't, I don't know. I, 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 there's a, there's a really strong community uh, that is trying to improve the game and give updates in the feedback um, portion of mm -hmm. Bungie.net. I've made a commitment to start doing that again, giving them my feedback there in a positive way. I feel like if we focus on that giving positive feedback and giving it clear and concise, they have more to work on than just screaming at them. There sure. was a lot of that, in all fairness, on the Bungie forums. There, sure, there, there was, was some a lot amazing of, posts. Like, there there was really a were. lot of them. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Great. people with very detailed stuff, people who, you know, who explained, you know, I understand the relationship between skill base and connection base. I understand that, you know, how it hurts, you know, uh, newer players and how, you know, skill base hurts uh, veteran players. What about right. rank playlists? What about you know casual playlists? Like there was all sorts of great posts. You know, I don't I don't disagree with that, and and I and I and I want to be cautious to people in chat because it's like everybody's ready with their pitchforks and they've got their pitchfork and they've got their you know their their torch here and they're and they're you know they're 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 storming the castle. So I get it, and and so it may sound like to me to somebody listening to the podcast right now that I'm, um, you know defending Bungie or giving uh, them an excuse for what they're doing. I'm not. What I'm saying is that there is a positive way of, of expressing that, and some people are doing that. I'd just like to see more of the community and be a voice for that. Um, I, I do not see problems as much as you guys do with uh, um, connections. Um, I just don't. I have good games. I, I played a lot of Iron Banner. I, got, um, I had a weekend off. So I played um, uh, two and a half characters. I got two characters to five and a third character halfway through. Um, I played a lot of Iron Banner and I had a really good time. It was awesome. Mm -hmm. I played three characters to flawless. You know, I got, um, I, I must have done like six or seven cards. Um, I enjoyed the hell out of Destiny this weekend and I didn't have any connection issues. Maybe every once in a while I ran into somebody that was a red bar, but it wasn't enough to ruin my experience. So maybe, so well, I'm going to defend my perspective as, so, as, as not having that same problem. I just want to like say also, I, all, I really enjoyed Iron Banner myself, but I'm also in a I different- did, I did as well. Actually. Yeah, I'm in a different perspective right now. I've already accepted the fact that when I go to play Destiny PVP, I'm guaranteed to see somebody teleport. Like it's a guarantee. I'm going to witness somebody at some point during that yeah. session they're going to teleport or they're not going to take damage or they're going to kill me when they're dead, so on and so forth. I've accepted at this point and I laugh at it. And usually it becomes a thing where I'm like, oh my God, I can't believe this crazy thing happened even though I see it every time I play the game. I laugh at it and I still have fun with the game. The, I think the points that, I, I think the discussion, the focus is that Bungie is saying it's connection based and they value connection above everything else. And the experience from somebody who plays the game a lot doesn't feel that way. It feels like the opposite and that it's so they still based. got work to do. I know, but they're saying that's how it is right now. That that's how it's been implemented since August. No. Well, they're saying that that's their that was their that's their that's their See, I'm reading the weekly update different than you guys are then. That's that's probably part of it. They said that nothing has this... changed since August about Right, matchmaking. and they also said that connection always comes first and that's how it is right now. Because they set yeah. their goals, and then they also said that that's how it is. That's how it's been since August. That connection does come. No, first. I, I agree. I read it. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I, I'm. What I'm saying is that they're setting up a criteria for what they believe is going on in the game. I didn't read that they said that they've that they feel like they um they've got it down and 
you know, go s- suck it, on sit in a corner. No, so to the, me, to me, the it language was a, here, the Pope, is here's how we go about finding you a match. It's not here's how, here's how we try and do it. It's here's how right. we go about. You know, it's 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 not you know weak language. It's here's we go about how here's how we go about finding you a match. Right. So I think that this is so how I read it is more of a prescriptive. Maybe maybe the frustration from the community is that the weekly update wasn't addressing what they wanted it to address. So I'd like to chime in here. Yeah. Right, do it. Um, I'm going to start out by saying that I feel like skill-based matchmaking should absolutely stay. Um, however, in its current form for the majority of the players disliking it, it's not working. And we need to examine that. Not just not just completely shut down any discussion of it and want it removed. Mm-hmm. Um, the point of skill-based matchmaking is for the largest end of the bell curve, the players that are that don't have the time investment to put into the game, it's so those players can go into PvP and have a fun, balanced, engaging match. The problem comes in for us, people on the tail end of the bell curve. The smaller percent of players, they'll put in a hell of a lot more time, and typically they're going to be a little bit more passionate, let's say that, about expressing their opinions on the game. Um, There are very, very obvious issues with that portion of the player base that get caught up in, you know, the whole skill-based matchmaking and trying to please the larger audience. Um... My personal thing is that, you know, if a system is working correctly, it should work correctly for everyone. And there are various obvious issues with skill-based matchmaking for basically all of us here that are that are kind of punished by it. If the system was working correctly, then, you know, why are we getting matched against players in Germany, in mm-hmm. Africa, in, you know, Dubai? That doesn't feel like a properly working system. Um, if it was if it was working, then they wouldn't even be in the available, uh, you know, player, player player matches. Um, so I've I've just been think I've been going through it. Why then are we seeing these issues? Because we're not going to see it this these issues in Iron Banner. We really aren't. Uh, you can we'll see laggy players, but I feel like the core issues are that this whole debate about is about is from just the normal playlist uh, uh, when Iron Banner isn't here because it, it'll it take me anywhere from five to eight minutes to find a match for basically any playlist when I normally want to play. And then there's going to be people that are in that match that have no reason that they shouldn't be there. The, or the only reason that they are there is, is there's a skill skill box that was checked because they're in Germany that shouldn't factor into the uh into the connection equation nope um so but if it's not Patrick then who takes up that person's spot like if that if that, that person from Germany well that's didn't uh, get in there then then you've got to pull somebody else exactly you might not be in the correct skill bracket that's you might the be. one point I was getting ready to say is it feels like there's a population issue which is causing all of this we have players spread across what eight something let me how how many different playlists are there in pvp right now there's like, a lot one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven there's 12 different playlists spread across pvp and you have you know your population divided amongst those and this is just for pvp um there could you know the uh, people doing strikes pve patrols raids uh other activities in the game um, and then you also have just like time. What time is it when you're playing? There's mm-hmm. so many factors beyond just the matchmaking itself that are driving, um, or that are causing all these it, that are, that are causing all these issues that we're experiencing. So, do you think it like? Do you think it really is player population though? Because if you any, it, any given time, there's between five to fifteen thousand people on the Twitch directory watching. And if there's that many people watching, 
I, I can't imagine that there's that many less than that many people playing. Uh, honestly, I you know I feel like it is a population issue because for me personally, yeah, during the day I'm gonna get some kind of weird weird instances of getting matched against someone in like Brazil or you know Portugal some. You know, somewhere where it's like, wait, why are they matched? Oh, they're in a fire team, and one of the fire team members is in the U.S. Okay, uh, I can see why that's happening. But towards the later hours in the day, like the 11 a.m. to you know, 11 a.m. to 6 a.m. or yeah, I guess that's or 11 p.m. to 6 a.m. for me, um, I'm I start to see the matchmaking really, really struggle, mm -hmm. and that's and that's when it gets really bad where we get players just a, a full solo queue lobby of a global playlist or, or of a global player population um, that will uh, never start with a full game. It will start with like 4v4 or 4v5 and then it might fill up over the course of the game. Maybe. I just don't Maybe. buy that there's nobody else playing to fill those matches up. I just don't and, buy it. I, 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 yeah, I can see that. Well, the, the one final thing I want to try to make a point of, if population is the issue with the current system, then we need to address the current system to be flexible with the population. Yes. Because if it's being so restrictive for a, a certain percent of the player base, that because that should be addressed. It absolutely should be, you know. The five percent of the player base's opinion is just as important as the other ninety percent. The ninety percent is just as important as the five percent. It doesn't matter. Every single player's um, time put into the game should be valued as much as every other player. Mm -hmm. um, and if the matchmaking system is ha causing these issues with that percent of the player base due to a population concern for the higher skill brackets then changes need to be made. Now, what those changes are, I have no idea in regards to the actual uh, matchmaking. Well, they got to open it up. They got to broaden it. Well, yeah, but that's that's a very general term. That's a very general term. We don't know what the specifics are. There, There is one very simple suggestion that I have, which is remove the we're breaking up the teams thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I agree, actually. Think about, th think about, think about this. Whenever... Whenever you get a good game and, you know, you win 10,000 to 5,000 or whatever, and then the system goes, hey, we're breaking up those matches. Okay, so basically the system has now added in another variable on top of all this other shit that's there that, okay, we can't match these teams up together and need to go put them in other games. Yeah, but listen to what you just said, Patrick. Like, you considered that a good game. You just stopped no, no, no. the shit out no, no, no. of another I, I, team. I'm on the losing end here, Pope. I'm on both the winning and the losing end here. The, no, I'm, I'm talking I mean, about honestly, like that, if you that breaks people up, that so breaks people up causes too many issues. All right, it, I, it, it just, simply causes too many issues within the matchmaking yeah. system. I hear, I and hear, I, I hear your concern. I, I'm I, all I'm saying is that I have three accounts with three different levels of skill in my house, and I spent the weekend because um. They weren't able to play, and I wanted them to get some Rise of Iron gear. So I played. I played on those other accounts. My experience in the game lobbies was similar, in that they the connections. I didn't have a whole lot of laggy people. It was it was good games. Um, the 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 skill range was tremendous. Now you guys don't have this opportunity to to do this, and and, I, and maybe you do, but I I I had it as an science this weekend, right? Um, on my on my uh, my wife's account, who arguably is she's beautiful and wonderful, but maybe not as great at PvP as you know some other people. Mm -hmm. So when I jumped on her account, I was getting like forty kills a game. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. Connection based matchmaking. Then I then in the middle, <laughs> I, um, I I went to my son's account, and who's better than than you know her. But uh, um, still not great at PvP. He plays those shotguns a lot. He likes the shotgun. Um, he, uh, you know, I was getting like 20, 25 kills a game. Okay? Maybe, maybe a little more. Mm -hmm. and, then, um, and then I went on my account, I was getting 10 to 15 kills a game. So I'm just saying, man, like 
the connection was being made. Good connections were being made to other players on all three of those accounts. And then the next connection after that was skill. It was working. God, I can't believe I'm saying that. Working as intended? It was working as intended. Then why does Pat... <laughs> for me. Why, okay, then why does Pat, who now has good internet, get uh, 4v4s <laughs> and 5v5s? And why do I get 4v4s I don't and 5v5s? Know, man. I'm not gonna, the, and I have good internet. The player population at that higher skill level is much smaller. But There's just the, fewer good players out there than there are players so, at Pope's son's or but, wife's ability. But what we're saying is that we're... We're negating the fact of what they said in the in the article. We're just saying, well, obviously this article that they put out is inaccurate because there's clearly a skill-based matchmaking element that's added to this. Otherwise, why would these games get formed that Pat gets and I get and yet Pope on all three of those counts, you're not getting them. You know? And Pope, you, you and I are like, what, live like an hour or two away from each other? We're yeah, sometimes I'm just right outside your bedroom window. Yeah, he's... <laughs> I can bring him in real quick. <laughs> Not creepy at Actually, all. Actually, <laughs> I would be super interested in asking all of you this question because it's a question that I've asked a few people. If we were to take skill-based matchmaking down, connection-based matchmaking up, what is the probability of that average group of players that are in the biggest pool of players going against the top even 5% on a frequent basis because surely mathematically and statistically it's more likely that they'll go against that same group anyway because there's more of them so every now and then maybe they'll get stomped by somebody but then if we're keeping that breaking up the fire teams thing they'll it'll only happen once and then they'll go find new players so statistically how often are you really going to have these players going to the Crucible getting absolutely stomped every single game? It's an awful experience and they never want to play again. Well, if you're just jumping into the Crucible, every player is going to feel like a real crafty to you. And this is this is another idea that I had. I, I completely understand protecting the bottom percentage. Mm -hmm. The guys that are brand new. Those guys completely get but if we're talking about like just the average pool of players, which are the biggest pool, because both the bottom percentage and the top percentage are having issues when it comes to these connections, because it's hard to find players for both of them. Yeah. But for this average pool of players, is it so bad if every now and then they go against the top 5%, the top 1%? Yes. Is it going to happen? It is. No, lot? it's it not is bad. bad it's because not bad. I'm telling you right now, I, I play with my son and he plays in the lobby with me and it's and 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 it's and it, and it's skill based connection and skill based on me right and he he has a horrible time he gets frustrated he's he he doesn't want to play he uh he gets um disappointed in the game and he, how he's playing and he wants to get off and stop playing after two or three games all right he goes into a crucible crucible by himself and we play next to each other and i play in a game of my own and he plays in a game of his own and sadly but you know, because I really want to play in a game with him. He has a lot of fun, and he can go play five, six, seven games and have a great time, and and not get distract, not get destroyed, and and enjoy his game. But, but that's the thing; it's going off of your skill, though. So of course, it's going to be happening like a lot more often because it's picking your skill. So your son's going to be going against people of your skill. Whereas if he was just playing normally and it was just connection, it might happen once. It gets break broken up, and then he has a great game. And you know, even now, I get stomped. I get put against like entire sweaty clans, and I'm there by myself. And I get stomped. I move on, and I continue playing the game. You know, that's how it was when I started playing. COD, for example, there was no skill-based matchmaking there. I'd go against really good players. I'd get stomped and be like, okay, what did they do? I want to get better. I want to compete in this competitive multiplayer environment. So I just, like, if you're, that's the thing with the whole connection thing as well, Pope, is that people were like, I want to play with my friends, and I can't because it's not fun because skill-based matchmaking is making right. us go against yeah. that skill level all the time. So that was actually... Right, that was one of the arguments against skill-based matchmaking, actually, is because it's like, I'm going against all these sweaty people and I can't keep up anymore. So people are like, let's widen that so you get a bigger variety of players. You get the yeah. good, you're get you going to have really good games, you're going to have really bad games. Well, it's going to be all over the place. That's really, honestly how it was a, in year one. It really was. It's, it was. I got stomped and I stomped. It yeah, was, exactly. It was all over. There's a, a really good um, um, post in chat from um, Superhero Deuce. He said, uh, best argument I haven't heard anyone say yet is that all other aspects of the game, players can choose a different level. The problem with Crucible is that it's unpredictable. The only skill-based 
through is should be through trials and iron banner because they're end game like choosing the raid or nightfall that argument is um the kind of coherent argument that i think that we can present to to bungie as a reason for some of the changes that you guys are asking so i agree with uh with his with his statement it it, it makes sense for me to say okay look let's have you know, like you're saying, Watts, with ranked playlists, let's have, um, you know, Trials and Iron Banner be more heavily weighted towards um, connection or skill, or how would we do that? How would that even go? What would that look like? I mean, if it's end game material, what is it? What is the, what is the, you guys are designers at Bungie. We're hiring you right now. How does that look? Uh, right now, this I would game... input, I would input a ranked playlist. <laughs> Well, and have people because another thing as well before we just jump into other thing and Tufty, I'm sorry. No, no, you're, you're fine. You're um, fine. Um, with skill based matchmaking being really strict, you never actually get the feeling of improving either because you're constantly in that same like it's just sweaty all the time and I never feel like I'm getting better. So even just giving people like a number that shows the skill rating that they're in, so they're like, cool, I moved up in my skill rating. That's awesome in game. It's it's it is rewarding you for playing in those sweaty games. If you're going to make me be sweaty all day, let me improve and feel like I'm improving and you mm -hmm. know, give me an emblem for it. Give me a shader yeah, for Yeah, give me an emblem the... for ranking up a little bit. Yeah, yeah I would I love know. that so much. And that doesn't even have to be a ranked playlist. It's just you know, if if you're not going to give people the choice of how they wish to enjoy the Crucible, which would be ranked playlist and then casual, which would just be connection, then you know, give them some something that shows they're improving because that is, you know, you don't feel like you're improving because you're playing yeah. the same the entire time. It's very discouraging to going up against that environment constantly uh, because they don't give you any kind of measurement of where you're heading. But the, the biggest problem, though, first and foremost, is that the people who put a lot of time into the game and then get better at the game uh, essentially get essentially get brushed to the side with bad connections because since... Since you played the game a lot and you're good at it, now you have to go against people who uh, who also are good at the game, but then also have bad connections because of your locations, and it becomes less desirable. It, it really kind of ruins the fun for a lot of people to have, go up against a bunch of people who are lagging all the time. And that's not the destiny that a lot of people played in year one, and I think that's uh, a lot of the times why people harken back to year one and be like, oh man, remember the times... You know, yeah, you got final rounded, but at least you could get into some games that were that felt a, more entertaining. Now, um, yeah, I don't. It's like I think I saw Pi say something in chat about how it's it's like world based matchmaking at this point for people who <laughs> yeah. are in the upper echelon, <laughs> and that just isn't fun. That's not fun for a game that it it we treat it as if it's a competitive shooter, but in reality, it's not. Like it's no. not to it's, the point yeah, where Overwatch is, you know. And that's the biggest problem. But these the things that Bungie feels like they're doing makes it feel like it wants to be a competitive shooter. Yet the the tools to make it truly competitive aren't in place, like dedicated servers and a better better netcode. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. <sighs> Drink. And I don't know. You know, it, this is yeah. a this is something that I think that we could talk about every night for an hour. You know, like, and Probably. just never run out. And it's a, it's a, it's a balancing act. I think that Bungie's got to do. And I think, I actually, I think it was, it was an awesome thing that the community on the Bungie forums brought it up in such a big way. Like, I, I know that some of those posts were pretty, pretty nasty, mm -hmm. but I thought it was pretty cool that everybody said, you know, this is not working for us as a community. Let's make it a big ass topic. Mm -hmm. I, I thought it was pretty cool. And, uh, I, I think and definitely... I, what I thought was cool is that is jumping into the feedback forums and reading mm -hmm. some of those posts and finding them some of the most educational uh, posts about Absolutely. this topic. I felt like that is a like I really got to give kudos to the people that are focusing on that. Um, it's a uh, it's just really hard. There's such a toxic situation right now. And um, even it's like not, in the chat I don't even right think now, it is that toxic. I mean, yeah, yeah it there is, is. It is, Brian. There, if you have a different, there opinion are some right people now, who are being toxic. Different opinion. There are a ton of people who are coming up with like I, I made a video today. I have paragraphs and paragraphs of posts Same. about you know what I Same you know her. honest opinions on what they think you know should be done. They're not toxic. They're not like awful. There, if you go on the budget forums, there's huge long posts about you know here's how we could fix things. I'm 
you know, I'm not name calling. I'm not doing anything. I'm just saying, here's what I think could be fixed. It's not toxic at all. I think it's. No, I agree. I agree with you that that there are some like that. There are some that are toxic. There are, there always is though, right? There's always going to be a ratio of that to this and this to that. Right, but, but I, I mean, just I think just this community to, wants change for sure. Right, I agree. But here, but let me let me let me point out something here. These the people that are in in chat, you know, we are. I I, I love this. I, I love this community to death. Right, like they know that. I you guys know that. We're all friends here. And look how heated it's getting already. Right. This isn't. This isn't a. You know. And I I I presented an opinion of um a, a different opinion that based on my perspective. And the immediate reaction of people in chat is to shout it down, right? And so is that the way that we should be promoting this community talking about things? No, I don't think it's the way that we should be promoting it. I don't think it's perfect. But I also think that there are a lot of voices out there that are not being heard that don't feel it's the issue that you guys do. I, think, I don't. I don't think you can detract from the people who are trying to make it an issue just because you want some other issues to be the top issue, though. No, 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 no. I'm just saying that. No, that's not my point. My point is, is that there's a lot of the population that doesn't see this as an issue that is not as vocal. Sure. Yeah, uh, that's fine. But right now, this week, the community, a lot of the community, came together and said, "Look, this is not working for us. The way it's set up is not working for us. We'd like it changed." And then some. Some other people are saying, that. hey, mm, I kind of like the way it is. You know, like there's – and there were some really good conversations that were happening on the Budgie forums. It moved over to Reddit. It moved on to YouTube. No, it moved agree. on to Twitch. I think no, ultimately I – I, I agree that this has been good. I think ultimately people are not happy with the Crucible. Crucible is not as fun as it used to be. And I've really tried to val- like reevaluate why that is for me why I'm not spending, you know, five hours in the Crucible having a great time. And it's definitely not down to frustration or just, like, being fatigued by playing Destiny so much. I love the way Destiny plays. I go on any other shooter and I'm like, eh, it just doesn't feel as good as Destiny. But the, ba- the balance issues are huge, especially right now. If you are, assume where any of us are playing, Palindrome, Clever Dragon, Matador. Gum. That's it. That- that's it. <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> That's with all of the guns that are in Destiny, which makes it so amazing, all of the variety, we need better balancing. That's yeah. a big issue for me. And and I think, you know, even if Bungie's like, okay, connection is more important and skill is less important, would it hurt to just mess around with it a little bit and be super transparent that they're doing it and be like, hey guys, we shifted it into a, a more connection based. Let us know in a week what you think about it. If people like right. it, then we're like, okay, let's keep tweaking it. Is it a bad idea at this point in the game to just do a few tests? Because they've done stuff like that before where they're like, I would in like control. I would love that. They did it when they were like, in control, we've done this kind of matchmaking. Let us know what you think about it in control compared to other playlists. It was last March. I would like that yeah. quite a bit. Last March they did I that. They are very open. I think it would be a terrible idea. I think it would be better yeah. if they did that, honestly. Some of those theoreticals that you were talking about earlier, Watts could be kind of proved out or disproven, like if they started doing right. some of these tests, like public tests. Even have like a playlist that's just like a public test playlist. You know, I was uh, me- messing around earlier, thinking of some ideas, um, and it just one of the things is like the communication of Bungie is so spotty. Like so, in some areas, you know, we have some good communication. In others, it's just a complete dial tone. For the most part, um, and when when we talk about having like a public, or when they when they were doing like the tests on control, mm-hmm. I feel like that's a very difficult way to get proper data mm-hmm. on that because they're limiting it to one playlist with these one things, and they're heavily heavily uh, saying, "Hey, this is a playlist that we're, that we're running tests in. Please play this." So it feels like it's artificially inflating the amount of players that would normally play there. Mm-hmm. And then when it gets applied across everywhere, and then we're still having problems. So, further leads me to believe that this is a population issue uh, with the people that are in like that five percent area. Um, what if, uh, what like if you imagine the player base is like a pyramid? Like, what if the skill based matchmaking just got wider? Like it 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 slowed down when you got to the top of the pyramid, so that you know, like imagine like. Bottom level of the pyramid is like a one skill level. The top is a hundred. What if once you got to like that ninety level of skill, 
it got a little looser with the skill based, you know, or, you know, maybe at the 80 level. So like an 80 could play a hundred and a hundred could play an 80. And that would just bring more people together. Like that way it protects the, it protects the base of the pyramid, but also allows the, the top of the pyramid to have a little bit more fun. I don't know, you know, without knowing how this stuff exactly works, you can't really, exactly. Maybe that's how that's, it works yeah. now, but that, that's we need one more of the information. I, I think, would love more information. I think about I don't everything. feel like we will get more. Yeah, I think the Probably biggest not. the biggest takeaway, Probably honestly, not. from this and from what reading that and reading in between the lines for me is that they're not really paying attention to this version of Destiny right now. I mean, they are because they have to support a live game, but I think the the main focus is on Destiny Two and making a robust experience in Destiny Two. I really do. I think that they're as a company, they've mostly moved on to focus on that game to make that as good as it can be. So. <laughs> We'd like to have this version of Destiny as exceptional as possible, but I think the man hours involved to actually maybe fix some of these things that may not just be connection based. It, it might actually be fundamental engine problems that cause some of these mm -hmm. issues in the game, and that might mm -hmm. be part of it too. It's not just ping or uh, or latency and uh, tick rates and stuff like that. It might actually just be the game engine itself is having a tough time supporting all these variables, and after playing it for two years, we're suddenly like we're seeing the the holes in the engine leaking oil and being like, whoa, there's a problem here. And Bungie knows about it. And to fix that is going to be a long time because they're actually working on Destiny 2 instead. And obviously, we'd rather have Destiny 2, honestly. I think we can all agree on that. If they said, mm -hmm. hey, Destiny 2 is coming out real soon, so we're not going to make Crucible play perfect. You're going to get what you get right now then I actually would be okay with that, to be honest, because I'm like, well, at least I know in Destiny 2 things are coming. The problem is, like you said, transparency. They don't tell us anything about where things are going with it, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and, and talking about transparency and where things are going with it, this is one of the things that I'm really, really worried about. We saw that uh, Cosmo put out a little post on the forums saying, hey, you know, we, we hear your... We, we, want, we want to see more feedback on primaries. What would you guys yeah. do? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm we won't know what the hell they actually took from our feedback until a week before the patch is supposed to hit. Right. Yes. Yeah. Yep. That's one of the parts that's fundamental about communication in areas like, like this that, you know, can change the entire landscape of a game is constant feedback and communication. You know, Blizzard yeah. has PTRs for Overwatch, for World of Warcraft, so they can experiment with stuff months before it comes out. And there's an update, and there's a patch note for the update within the PTR, and says this is the changes that have happened due to feedback or due to how stuff played. And then people can play that and then respond to it on forums, and then there's more, more stuff, and it keeps getting more and more refined until we have a patch that is hopefully bug-free. But also you know, is representative of what went on during the PTR. Now, I'm not saying that they need to make a PTR because that's, mm -hmm. that is a massive fucking time investment and money investment, most importantly. But having clear open communication in regards to things that they're thinking about doing in the sandbox when they've received updates from the community or feedback from the community, you know, that would go a very, very long way in helping shape the helping shape the world of the game because right now yes we know primaries are something that's being looked at they've at, they specifically asked for that but aside from you know various you, you have an entire spectrum of stuff going into the comments of buff primaries to like they were in year one to know just these primaries need to be up above need to be buffed to no fuck you just buff shotguns you know you have this huge spectrum of stuff and we have no idea what they're actually planning on doing and we won't know yeah, until it, that yeah. one week. It would be super great if they were like, okay, give us some of your ideas on how you want to balance some stuff. And then they read through it and they're like, okay guys, so we've read this and honestly this kind of thing wouldn't work, but let's focus on the stuff that you guys said that would work. And it, it needs to be a constant feedback. I know we can't mm -hmm. have a PTR because it's a console game, it's complicated, well, but... PTRs do exist, but it, it, they, it's they a very do. It's, 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 expensive. it's fucking. It's a expensive. whole thing. <laughs> yeah, it's a whole thing that we can't get into right yeah. now. But just having that feedback on the forums of like, okay, this stuff that we've seen looks really good. This stuff that we've seen, we can't really do. Let's talk about this and start refining it even more. Would be really great instead of just like, give us your feedback five months later. Here's a patch. <laughs> it's like, yeah, yeah. That, that's the way. It, it, yeah. It's a, it's a door that opens for a conversation like once 
every three months and then quickly closes and then opens up again to show us, you know, what they heard and give us a response from that conversation, then close again. And then and we're like, whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah. <laughs> That's not what we said. What's going on? Yeah. <laughs> it, what it feels like is we've been saying, hey, what's up with this skill based matchmaking? Obviously, you <laughs> add it literally a year ago in December and we've complained about it and then you've manipulated it and changed it. Also, you didn't tell us about it. And then you're like, oh, somebody did put it. We didn't mean to do that. It happened. And yet now we're talking. You didn't mean to put it or you didn't mean to say you didn't put it. Wait, yeah, wait. exactly. Exactly. <laughs> and now and now they give us a weekly update that says, guys, it's connection. Honest, it's connection. That language needs to go away. They need to be more transparent about that stuff. And again, it might be that it's 50 different departments in the studio and half of them don't talk to each other. That's possible. It's completely possible that it's like, mm -hmm. um, you know, the politics in the office that makes some of this stuff get flying by or flow by, but they need, they need better communication. I think Bungie does listen personally also. I, th I really I do. do. Like oh, they seeing, do. Yeah. No, they absolutely yeah, do. Seeing this weekly update is a it's a clear indication that they're listening. They're like, whoa, we yeah. have to talk about this. A lot no, of they're, they're, talking. they're totally listening. And I think mm -hmm. the big reason why we got a, a thing in the, the article that wasn't super detailed and they didn't give a bunch of stats on like, this is what we think is a good time that you should spend in orbit. This is an acceptable mm -hmm. ping for us is because they were like, we really need to talk about it because if we don't this week, people are going to be pissed. So yeah. they just... <laughs> So they're definitely they're definitely listening. I would never say that Bungie's not listening. It's just I think we have said for a long time that we would really love more transparency and more frequent communication. Mm -hmm. And I think that would help on a lot of the journey towards having a better Crucible experience for everyone. Mm -hmm. Even if they admitted that they don't have the time or the resources to fully fix problems that we're experiencing. Yeah, and be like, we're making Destiny 2 awesome. Sorry, guys. Yeah, <laughs> Deal I'd be with like, it. <laughs> I would totally okay. be fine with that. I'd be like, you know what? The silver lining is Destiny 2 is going to be awesome. It's great. Yeah, and we got to race sparrows in skill-based <laughs> skill -based sparrows. Skill-based sparrow skill matching. Skill-based sparrow racing. <laughs> Yo, that was a thing. There, Last year, like the it, first day, I could win every match I got into. By the end of the week, I couldn't win a single match. It was tough. Connection, yeah. Briar, 100%. Ah, you know. Oh, they, it, it was you know, obviously I, I have the very best of the And it even says it right there in the update, Tefty, that it, it has skill in the in the algorithm. <laughs> yeah, but it, it, it says in the update that it pulls, it specifically says that the step one is get the best connections in your area. Pool the players around you with the best ping. And then sort those players by skill. Those are two Don't different things. say anything pools. about area. Well, okay. it doesn't say yeah, you're that. Right. Yeah, you're right. It says ping, you know? So, or I'm kind of. Uh, you, you add it in then. So you're assuming that the, you're assuming that it's it's grabbing a group. And I'm just I'm just being argumentative at this point. It's 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 a uh, I think it gives us an idea that Bungie is also looking at this as well. Um, this is how they do matchmaking. Um, I think the feedback we give them now is our how we feel this is going and that, that and that's what people are doing and i think that if the community keeps giving that feedback that they don't they don't see the 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 their experience isn't what they're explaining here in the update um in a constructive way bungie will adjust that that's what i believe is going to happen i got one final note to say also on the um on this stuff with matchmaking i've had people try try to stream snipe me that are in my area and can't get in yet it's connection we based. know it exists we know i, I couldn't i couldn't stream exists. snipe bungie they're 15 minutes away from me exactly. <laughs> and you know what's and you know what's awesome the one time i've been thankful for skill-based matchmaking this entire <laughs> time was when we didn't when no one had a friends list due to the uh like the dns ddos that was going on a couple weeks back and so ian watts and i we couldn't find each other on PlayStation Friends because it didn't pop up and couldn't find each other in game because that pulls off the PlayStation Friends. So we so we use skill based matchmaking <laughs> to all queue into the same game at the same time, which said three, two, one, queue for control. And then we all got into the same game. Pretty much it immediately. Took, it took, it took like two instantly. tries. It took yeah. two tries. And you're kind of far from me, Patrick. I'm in Tennessee. Me yeah, and Ian and are kind of close together, but me and you are kind of far. <laughs> uh, I don't know, man. Like, there's no solving this issue in one podcast. There's no solving this yeah. issue. No, like, and it's, it's some of the player base. 
is always going to ask for purely connection based. Some of them are going to say, "No, I don't want to be playing people who are way better than me. I just want to have a, you know, I want to have a competitive time in the crucible with players of my own skill." There's and I think some people are bringing up. I think some people are just echoing what they hear streamers and other people say, and they don't know what you know connection based matchmaking would do to their experience. And they're and I'm pretty damn sure that the majority of people that aren't good PvP players would be singing a different tune two weeks from now if they did what you guys wanted them to do and focus on uh, on com- connection based. Oh. Don't we? No one really knows. No yeah. one really knows. Yeah. I don't Who's know. I do remember playing COD, like Watts said earlier. I remember playing COD in the days where it was connection based and it was fun. It was sometimes you did get stomped, but. It was fun. The connections were good in COD 4 back in the day. In Modern Warfare 2, they got as they introduced skill-based matchmaking, the connections got worse and worse in that game. And they introduced it in Black Ops 3, and everyone was like, take it out. And they were like, okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, they responded very fast. <laughs> they you know, did. They in, were Reach, like, in Reach, I, I just took it as a learning experience. When I got stomped, I was like, damn, I got well, owned. And then uh, and then there was games where I stomped, and, and then there was close to games. You know, completely fair, there's... I need I need to put out this video on Magic the Gathering player profiles and relating them to Destiny because this will really help explain what the hell I'm doing here. I can't um, imagine. No, no, it, it's seriously <laughs> really helpful. It's seriously really helpful. In Magic the Gathering, there's three player types: Timmy, Johnny, and Spike. Timmy <laughs> is the type that sees a card that's like, "That looks cool as shit. I want to play it," and has no regard for how good it actually is. It looks cool. It'll prob it'll probably do something really cool in a very finite circumstance, but mostly it's just about you know Timmy wants to smash things. Then there's Johnny, who has a very specific idea of how to play the game and wants the game to fit into his fantasy and how he should play it. He can he can win maybe one out of every twenty games, but Timmy can Timmy will you know, feel satisfied if he won that one out of 20 games in a very, very specific manner that fit within his fantasy. Spike, Spike is the tournament player. The only way that Spike likes to have fun is by winning. And it doesn't matter how he wins. So in Destiny, that would be the player that really liked playing Night Stalker, but then after, you know, a certain nerf happened to Night Stalker, they're like, oh, I'm going to go swap over to Stormcaller. Stormcaller. Skill Because... Because the melee is really fucking good, and that's going to be really good in this meta. So, with that in mind, and how players play Destiny, there are three types of players in Destiny. Timmy, Johnny, and Spike. We're all Spikes, because we have no. the drive. But I strive no, to be Timmy. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I use Dragon Promise, okay? No, no, no. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. No, you, no, you I'm have, not. You're not. It's not... I it's have not fun done. winning and losing. I really do. You're not either. It's it's not an either or. Like you you can't you can't you can be a spike but not a Johnny. It's a mix of everything. Okay. Um, it's a mix of everything. Every single one of us here is spikes. If you are listening to this podcast, you are a spike because you <laughs> have a desire to better yourself as a player. That is a very spike like quality. Now, a lot of players out there in that bell curve are Timmys and Johnnies. They don't necessarily care about winning. Every player cares about winning, but it's not the sole priority and goal. And that's the different type of players that we're seeing with this whole skill-based matchmaking discussion. Is that it's too fun? You have two fundamentally different ideas of how the game should be played, and most importantly, enjoyed. Listen, and yes. I, if I shoot somebody with a shotgun. <laughs> and then they just look at me and say, what up, fam? And then shoot me with a shotgun. And then it happens consistently. And then the one time I do kill him, I get a post-mortem with my shotgun. That is not how the... That's that's like playing a different set of chess. That's where your pawn can kill the opponent's queen easily. That's not fun. I'm sorry. No, it's not. Yeah. I could care less if I win or lose, honestly. I really... I'll, I'll put... I'll, I'll, I've already I like made the analogy. For that video. I, I've already made the script, though. I'll... I'll just Honestly, I'm out. super happy when I lose and stomp people. So clearly, I'm not a spike. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a, a with Dreg's potato. So I'm also a Tammy. That's a that's yes. a Johnny. That's a Johnny quality right there. Is that yeah? That's a Johnny quality. The only reason why you um, use 
crappy guns is to prove you can beat somebody with a crappy gun. <laughs> no, I just get really bored. Spike. of using the same thing. I'm the same Sometimes. in League of Legends because in League of Legends, spike. like, just show me the spikes. Turn around. In, in League of Legends, <laughs> like, I change my skins like every time. I can't stick with one champion. I can't stick with one gun. I just get bored really easily. I change my shader all the time. I change a, my whole that, hunters. That, that's a Johnny. That's like a Johnny quality. <laughs> <laughs> because in yeah, whatever. I'm a Johnny, yeah. I think. You can't you categorize me, Patrick. <laughs> okay, <Timmy>. okay. Okay. <laughs> Did you guys see that study that was done on Destiny players? No. No. This was pretty pretty in depth. I can't figure out where it was published. Um, but it's it's, it's a really in depth study. They took a ton of data from uh, Bungie players, mm -hmm. and they were you know. Most most kills, like ha basically, they were able to categorize players based on their behaviors, uh, and they did it for PvP and PVE. Uh, it was really interesting. Like they they were able to categorize, like like your Jimmy Jimmy Tommy Spike reference. Like like, are you uh, short range with long range mix? Are you long range hardcore PvP? Are you balanced one? Like, there's all these different titles, but the best one was. The PvP profiles, there was only four types of players, and they were able to categorize everybody into it. Hmm. Objective killers, casual PvPers, aggressive close range, and marksmen. And yep. aggressive close range, of course, was 35% of the population. <laughs> <laughs> marksmen was less of the population. It was like 30%, but it was the people who play the most hmm. and the highest skill level. So even though there were more aggressive close range um, players, I, I don't know. It's a pretty interesting study. It's really long in some of it. So what you're saying is that snipers have skill and shotguns don't. Is what you're saying? I'm just reading what I'm reading. No, I'm just reading stats off the reading thing. Oh, okay. <laughs> off the reading thing. Well done. <laughs> Speaking so, of reading things, don't we have something for blue microphones? Yeah, we probably do. We probably do. Uh that I would be a really he wasn't good feeling it if I could. <laughs> you know, just, I'm stalling uh, right now because there was other again, things on the weekly yeah. update though. Damn it! Yeah, yeah, There's that's that. what I was. Well, hey, also, get, hold up. The, go, your, someone your, read uh, the very skilled, last sentence. Hold on, your skill talk of shotgunning. I just want to point out that uh, BSK <laughs> won the tournament, and uh, I think were they all using shotguns? Everyone in the tournament was using a yeah, shotgun. Everybody in the <laughs> Everyone? There was Not no snipers. There was no <laughs> sidearms. There you, was no you, what fusions. Are you, what are you, what are you, I, no, 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 no. I saw some fusion. I saw some fusion You play. saw a fusion? Okay. I, I yes. see what you said. Everyone else, like, seriously, mo everyone was using a shotgun. Yeah, uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Lupo's team um, went up against <laughs> another team that uh, they had a sick fusion rifle. The other team just had an amazing fusion rifle player that was wreaking havoc on uh, Dr. Lupo's team. So, yeah, yeah. It, what part of Doctor Lupo was it wreaking havoc on? Every part, mm -hmm. all the parts. Have you watched his chat? It's 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 hilarious. Like there's there is Twitch names for every part of his body. Mm -hmm. Like, and they're very active people. Doctor Lupo's nose, Doctor Lupo's <laughs> ear, Doctor Lupo's like eyebrows. It's like they have conversations between the different parts of his body in chat. It is hilarious. Oh man! Yep. Really could use more awesome. iron over here. Mouth, <laughs> Doctor Lupo's mouth. <laughs> Maybe you could be and, making some better decisions. Uh, <laughs> except uh, Briar, do you guys have the weekly update pulled up? Someone should read the very last sentence before DJ out. Go for it, Briar. I don't have it pulled up. <laughs> I got it. Give me a sec. All right. It was a Kotaku article, um, Briar. Do you want me to link it to you? What's that? What was a Kotaku the study article? on Destiny player like, behavior? Uh, no, it wasn't a Kotaku article. They they wrote an article about that study. Right. The, I'll, I'll put the link the in study the study. Yeah. But that's what you were talking about. Yeah. That was the article that referenced it. Nava Bear sent me the link. It was a it was a great study. I mean, it, there's long parts of it that are very uninteresting. I right, just like the actual study. Oh, okay, thank you. I'll, I'll find some interesting stuff in there. I'm sure. It's very good. Uh, did we settle the matchmaking debate once and for all this week? Certainly not. That's the nature of a community that includes so many games. Different people want different things from their hobby. To occupy the same space in relative, uh, relative harmony, each of us needs to consider our neighbor. Nevertheless, the com conversation will continue. We will strive to keep building a better game for you. Next week, Thanksgiving will be visited upon our shores. There will, be, there will still be a blog fodder for your reading eyes. Intelligence reports, it will... 
be random and light. The week after that, we'll be packing our bags for Anaheim, California. The particulars of our mission are still a mystery. We'll cross the finish line soon. DJ out. PlayStation experience. Oh, yeah. is a PSX in there? It's in Anaheim at that time, yeah. I'm so pretty I... sure that they're going to take this opportunity to re- announce an expansion. I mean, last year, yeah. I feel like, you know... Really, I got the same like, feeling going into PSX that I had last year, and you know why should I be disappointed by that? I'm, I'm feeling Destiny 1.5. Oh, gonna get I'm Friar. feeling SRL. We're gonna see a lot of emotes <laughs> and uh, maybe some 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 new SRL. I think it's gonna be Dark Below too. I think they're gonna drop it on us. <laughs> <laughs> the return Friar. of Crota. I the just want to be Crota, able to. Uh, yes. The return of Crota. Yeah, Crota's back. I want to be able to dump 50 bucks into a sparrow. That's what I'm really hoping. PSX. Right? <laughs> like a golden That's sparrow. sparrow. Like a specific sparrow, not I want a sparrow. Listen, here's what I'm talking about. I want a sparrow yeah. that when I equip it, it's golden and it and it burns a glimmer. So I can only use it if I have glimmer. And my actual no, glimmer account burn. starts burning down as I'm running it. Yeah. Can you, can, like, you like, can you throw can you throw strange coins in it to make that like rocket fuel? I'd love it. I'd like a strange coin booster on there. It just burns a strange coin every time you hit it. Well, and when you run over, if you run over a thrall or something and kill an enemy, you know how you get glimmer for that? That feeds the tank. Mm -hmm. Good. Oh, okay. I I want to make sure that sterling treasures uh, stay at the top of the PSN. um, Oh yeah, PSN leaderboard for. (laughs) Add-on items. <laughs> this is what I'm <laughs> talking about. We put it there with Festival of the Lost. We did a damn good job. And now we got to keep it there. <laughs> I, uh... That's the top item on there. Yet there's less than 2,000 people playing Crucible? Come on. Come <laughs> I, uh, on. I have a very... I, I don't know if I like admitting this, but... I, I, Briar knows what I'm getting ready to say. Yeah, this is great. I, uh, <laughs> I, I got a message today saying, Hey, you earned $15 in, from PlayStation. Uh, and I was like, why the hell did I do that? And they're like, you spent $100. And I'm like, the hell did I spend $100? Oh, you know what you did. <laughs> yeah. Why did I get that? I've spent well, well over $100. I got mine last night during stream. In fact, it was like, hey, you got some free <laughs> spending point. I was like, what? What I the hell? I check my email. Yeah. I don't have one. That's unfortunate. <laughs> Well, um, I think we're getting Sparrow of the, uh, Sparrow of the Lost. <laughs> Sparrow of the Lost. Sparrow, 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 um, Sparrow of the Racing League. I put on my Sparrow Racing League shirt just to, to oh, you know, looking good. celebrate the That the makes event. you look faster to me. Nice. Yeah. Well, what makes me look faster is this amazing beard. Mm. It's looking good, Pope. You gotta shave that thing off. That's gonna slow you, slow you down. No, man. Great turbulence. <laughs> you get a nice swim cap. <laughs> That must explain why you and Tefty are so damn slow. Yeah, I am slow. <laughs> I take my time, man. You have very short legs. Yeah. <laughs> hey, so right. while we're discussing what makes stuff look good, you you know what else makes you yes. look good and sound good? Boom! What? These blue mics. Woo! Because no doubt you notice these wild and mics and headphones <laughs> we're using. They're just some of the iconic gear that Blue creates. Blue's award-winning products are the driving force behind professional musicians, internet creators, and countless elite gaming teams and Twitch streamers. Their Yeti USB mic is the internet's most popular microphone, and their MoFi and Lola headphones deliver insane sound in a very personalized fit. Blue offers everything you need to completely immerse yourself in the ultimate gameplay experience. Learn more about Blue at bluemic.com. Nailed it. Absolutely nailed it. nailed it. All right. How many questions are about connection-based matchmaking this week? <laughs> uh, you know, I actually tried to wait. wait we weed still them got stuff to talk about. Do we? Do we? Dude, we're, we didn't we talk are about the tournament at all, really. We didn't talk about the the ride along, really. Can, can we just can we table that for a future date, possibly? I like Borges' work on the on 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 on. The the ride along it was awesome. I wish they would publish some stuff that show that gave us art so that I could have it. Hmm. Yeah. Did you guys see the uh, the captain wheeling the dual guitar? Yes. <laughs> see, there's stuff pretty I'm amazing. About. <laughs> I feel like that should be the thumbnail for every YouTube video I do from here on out. <laughs> 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 Just the captain wielding the dual dual guitars. I want that a little figurine of that them to sell at the on the bungee store. Mm-hmm. Yes, I would like that too. <laughs> a plushy version and all a hard of these plastic things. Version. Yeah, all of these things. I want them all. <laughs> all of it. Give me all of the things. All of the things. I don't know. It was it was a cool ride along. I really enjoyed it. They had a really great stories. Um, 
hearing from the raid team and how they the design concepts and things like that it was a lot of fun did you guys get to watch a lot of the 4v4 tournament mm-hmm. i watched what did you guys all think of, of the format <laughs> uh no but not in one day but I mean, the you 4v4, had, I'm sorry. I'm, the, okay, oh, okay. 4v4, yeah. yeah, 4v4 seems pretty good. I know a lot of players wanted it to be 3v3 because they feel like it would give snipers more of a place. So they feel like 4v4 is maybe a little bit too fast and in your face to really have snipers. Um, but I, I enjoyed I enjoyed watching it. Yeah, I, I think it's important. If, Desti- if Destiny as a game, or if Destiny players want to progress this game toward a competitive environment where they actually get viewership, I think it's important for them to remember that you have to make this entertaining. It can't just be fun to play. It has to be entertaining to watch as well. I think 4v4 is a little more entertaining than 3v3. Nice. I think uh, the, I'm with Watts. It was a little daunting to try to get everything. Imagine for the players, too, to get it all in one day. It, one day I, was crazy, I wish yeah. I wish it would have been maybe the, the finals on you know, Sunday and all the elimination stuff on the previous day and just make it uh, spread it out a little bit, build up some hype for the next day. I think the seeing players um, having to sit around and get cold, you know, for like five hours, it yeah, just uh, it made it really difficult for me yeah. to, to feel yeah. like there was they're at their best, you know, as mm-hmm. athletes or, you know, prepping themselves for the event. Yep. So. I don't know. I, I, I really I really liked it. I, I mean, I was excited that Lumi um, and BSK1, I think that there was a lot of really good gameplay. I want... They're uploading all the games mm-hmm. uh, to YouTube. And I don't know about you guys, but I really enjoy watching tournament um, uh, gameplay like that because it really helps me to understand. These are guys that are crazy good at a certain play style or something that they do and being able to watch it really informs my gameplay and uh, it's something I really enjoy. Yeah. Certainly get better at using a shotgun by watching that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. it, 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 it was a <laughs> it was it was a little bit disappointing for someone who enjoys sniping and uh sidearm play to like see none of that being used at all. The and then a lot of the uh, the primary play was basically hand cannons, uh, mm-hmm. team shotting with hand cannons, or or clever rifles. dragons. Clever dragons, it's like clever dragons and hand cannons were the were the optimal choice for a majority of the players. And then shotguns were, yeah. <laughs> the clever dragon it, it's, is, is it was is tiring. Is there see. the clever it's dragon was good. there? But what we're seeing is that despite its popularity and everybody saying, "Oh, it's game breaking," you know. There's still a lot of other game, a lot of other guns out there right now that are competing. Right, with it. somebody's got to take the bottom seven slots in my rumble match. No, I mean, so we we talked about it right before the podcast started. But the, you remember the Lamedia, uh, the from the Leod Mill from the what is it? How's it pronounced? Leod Mill Lydia. Thank you, Leod <laughs> Ladmula, I thought from said, the, uh, I thought uh, said the postmaster. If you if you chlamydia? have that one, he, uh, there's the, a the, one the chlamydia with... pulse rifle. <laughs> <laughs> it's got a, a head seeker, <laughs> uh, counterbalance, and a brace, brace frame, frame, and it's beautiful. I've been using it. If you hit, if you if you you can, it can compete against other um, fast fire rate pulse rifles if you're accurate. Uh, maybe Pope. I hate to say it, but. Maybe at the lower skill brackets and the higher skill brackets. Fuck no. Well, that's what I'm Fuck talking no. about. I'm talking about my perspective. I don't. I'm not I looking know. at things. I know. I know. I know. But goddamn, like if I tried to use that, I, I I was just trying to use the lingering song this weekend to try oh, and get footage up for a review, and I love it. Yeah. I love it. But going up against like high caliber rounds, clever dragons for eight out of ten uh, primary engagements. I was, it, it was almost impossible to get footage. For you know that. how to use that gun? Is you use it in a team based game mode and you team shot with it? Yep. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like 95 damage takes to the head. Huge chunks of yep. damage away. Yeah. But man, you don't want to get caught in a one on one with that. Mm, it's rough. All right. Let's do some Twitter questions. We don't have much time left. Uh, Salo asks Do you three guardians love or hate, or do, you, do your three guardians love or hate each other? 
They aren't mm-hmm. aware of each other's existence. Right. You got one main and two side pieces, right? <laughs> <laughs> you want to keep them separated. <laughs> Different area codes. I don't tell my hunter about how fucking dirty it feels to go play on a warlock with Ophidian aspects. I don't. Mm. I just don't. I just my hunter goes, How come all my weapons have quick draw on them now? It's like, shh, it's okay, baby. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Josh Gentry says, "What exotic armor would you look forward to having ornaments if they were getting them?" Bone, bones of Ao, because I'm tired of the leopard print camo pattern on Bones of Ao. <laughs> it's ugh. oh, Watts, you're oh, muted. Oh, Watts, you're muted. Microphone. Oh, that was another issue with the mic again. Yes, yeah. I was screaming bones. So Patrick, Patrick got me. Get rid of the yeah. stupid leopard go. thing. I gotta go Twilight Garrison because that blue life preserver look, man. That, that also is, yeah, is a problem. Seriously. That is yeah. horrific. I think I figured out where the Twilight Garrison's from in game two. I think it's repurposed cabal technology. Have you ever actually killed a cabal <laughs> and then looked at their chest piece? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It looks the exact same as it's, the Twilight huh, Garrison. Mm-hmm. Exact same. Uh, Mr. Aries, what are your hopes of things shown at PSX from Bungie? I'm literally just expecting SRL and like what what we're bringing to SRL this time. More maps, more cool things for you to wear. I think uh, we're going to get a new Sparrow type like we did last SRL? Hope so. I would like that. That'd, That'd be, be badass. Great. I didn't even think about yeah. that. I'm yeah, like setting, I'm setting the bar so low. I'm like, if if they gave me the exact same maps in the exact same book, that way I can be like, okay. Got it. It's just the same thing over and over, you know. But if they do give something else, I'm going to be pleasantly, pleasantly surprised. And if they this possibly, time you're going to get to run the maps possibly. backward. It's like getting two exactly. brand new maps. Exactly. <laughs> this is exactly right. And if they they possibly dropped a poster of Destiny Two, then I'd freak out. But oh, I don't think it's going to happen. I don't think it's going to happen. It's just going to be God. the exact same SRL, and maybe like the the bonus or the takeaways that they're going to enable it for private matches from that point on out. Yeah. Uh, Frost Diaz asks, out of curiosity, who will be playing Pokemon Sun and Moon when it's released? Follow-up question, which one should I get, Sun or Moon? I'm actually thinking of waiting to play it on the plane when we go to England, because then that makes <laughs> me excited, because I'm like, I got all this time, and I can yeah. just sit here and play Pokemon. <laughs> and plus, it's really that hard would... to capture Pokemon, so it's even more like, ah, I'm just going to play it whenever, <laughs> you know? Yeah, I'm just going to enjoy my game. <laughs> I'm not going to be playing I'm Pokemon. I'm not going to play it. Nope. You know what I'm going to be playing? Even Planet Pokemon. I'm going to be playing P- Planet Coaster. That just came Planet out. Planet Coaster? It's a theme park Is that like a roller coaster game. Ty- tycoon type game? It just oh, came out today. I love those kind wow. of games. Wow. It just came out today and it's amazing. Oh, I'm man. Gonna, I'm going to build, uh, I'm gonna build uh, Destiny Land and I'm going to put mm-hmm. I'm going to put skill based matching making as like a death ride that sends guests <laughs> out of the park. <laughs> you know, I just got a new PC and I wanted to see how powerful it was. So I went, oh, you know, I'll download it to Witcher. I heard that's really Witcher three. I heard that's really hard on PCs. I am absolutely fucking hooked on that game now. Like totally accidentally played like the first half hour just checking out the graphics. And now I'm like, I think eight hours deep and completely involved in it. Eight hours. It's and a good game. Eight hours deep with maybe point ninety two per- left to go. Point five percent checked <laughs> off. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like level seven. <laughs> No, Briar. I mean, I'm not in. I'm not huge into those games, but that one and Skyrim both did the same things to me. Yeah, yeah. I'm really enjoying it. I completely missed it in 2015. Uh, JK Rash 89. Could the netcode be so messed up that we could never see CBMM until Destiny 2? Sure. Apparently, yeah, why not? Apparently, could we are seeing CBMM. aliens land in my apartment building and make me a latte out of space material. Unlikely, <laughs> but possible. <laughs> Unlikely, but possible. <laughs> uh, Evan Myers, material. would you like to see RPG elements added from other RPG games to Destiny 2? Sure. Yes. Em- embrace your RPG Like a story? <laughs> <laughs> like how about evolving a weapon? <laughs> Hey, one of the cool things in World of Warcraft, because I have been getting to play it a little more recently, uh, they introduced yeah they introduced uh, artifact weapons into the game where you only get one weapon. Well, you can use other weapons if you wanted to, but 
basically like like the first quest that you do you get a you get this weapon that's like this fabled amazing thing and then that's your weapon for the entire expansion and oh, you, really? uh, oh, and you cool. upgrade it with like different skills in a tree that's uh, cool. and yeah it's it's an interesting idea it's an interesting idea I've always liked games where you can infuse weapons with different like rune stones or gems or stuff yeah, that you, you can could do that with you know her. so like imagine getting like uh, last word but your last word is a little bit different different for everybody else's because you infused it with like this special thing that you found you know like that would be a lot of fun it'd be impossible to balance but it'd be a lot of fun. <laughs> mm-hmm. Uh, Steelers four five. Do you guys think Bungie will divide the matchmaking into different playlists in Destiny two? I'm gonna say yeah. I think that they've probably seen that they have too many. I think a lot of games go through that. Actually, they're like, we have a we have a lot of playlists. Uh, this is kind of bad. So I think they might try and make things a little smaller so they're not you're not having to spread the population so incredibly thin because that might actually fix a lot of the issues potentially that we're seeing. So I think so. I think that whole thing will be mixed up. It's expanded a lot over the course of Destiny's yeah. exactly. life cycle. Yeah. You know, there's, it used to be more, much more compact than it is now. You know, it's mm-hmm. weird. Uh, like Reach showed player population. You guys remember that? You could go into Reach yeah. and it would say how many players were in the right. playing or online at the time. I, yeah. I wish they'd moved back to that. I don't know if it's like a thing. They don't want to reveal numbers, but they did mm-hmm. reveal numbers in the past. And it'd be nice to know, like, oh, hey, there's only 100 people in Rumble right now. Maybe that's I, not I think, the place I want to be. <laughs> exactly. Maybe, right, I'll, maybe right, I'd rather not yeah. wait 20 minutes for a match, you know? Yeah. Yeah. For yeah sure. well, Call of Duty used to do that, too, and they got rid of it, too. Yeah. I'll bring back the player population so we know. that Blame I, Activision. They took it out of both. You right? think? Blame it on Activision. Activision oh, was like, saying. don't reveal I mean, these numbers. No. <laughs> How dare you? Activision hates mean, numbers confirmed. Yeah. <laughs> like, Except, it's like, it's well, like the, the some blame really something like. de jour. You know, blame Obama, blame Trump, blame yeah. Activision, blame whatever. Grumpy cat. I'm done. We can't blame, blame Obama cat. for anything anymore. We got to. St- oh, yeah, we can. We'll, we'll, we'll find a way of blaming him. Keep going with it? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Daniel Colliver, which do you have more fun playing? Battlefield 1 or Titan 2? Titanfall 2. Haven't hmm. played Battlefield. So I guess Titanfall. Yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna say haven't played Battlefield One. Titanfall Two is freaking awesome. Had the best time in the world playing with uh, uh, Bife and Blue Weslo. And those two guys are hilarious, and it was so much fun. Loved it. Loved the gameplay. Felt like so good. Sorry. Uh, Same. I played. Uh, I played both campaigns. I've played a little bit of both multiplayers. They're different games. Uh, I enjoyed both campaigns a lot, actually. And Battlefield is all about immersion into that world and so the same thing with the multiplayer you get to feel like you're one of those soldiers on the ground where uh titan is all about making you feel like a a, a pilot god with wall, wall running abilities <laughs> so different games honestly yeah they are yeah. they're very different uh Tarek, another titanfall 2 question time travel was awesome in titanfall 2 i'd love to see it in destiny explaining so past events spoilers. In the lore, what do you think? Time traveling in the lore? Let's do it. I like it. Well, that, well <laughs> I think it'd be, it was a cool way it was handled in Titanfall 2. It'd be, uh, that specific style would work perfectly in Destiny, I think. Because mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you wouldn't have to like just go back in time and like lose all your inventory and like, it, you know, you could just do these little clips. It'd be fun. Yeah. Um, there's, a, there's a whole storyline with Praetis, right? Mm hmm. With time travel and who? being who? Praetor? Praetor. They got who? erased out of time space. I don't know who they're. Yeah, you know, know I, know I remember, but I existed. I, 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 I my, live. My favorite joke is to find a skeleton in a different game and be like, "Oh my God, Praetor! I can't believe you're in the, the Last of Us. It's amazing." I like how he was laying there like this, like, <laughs> yeah, like died upright, being like, yeah, "Wow." He died. <laughs> I'm just going to take a nap real quick. <laughs> uh, g your thoughts on the Trials maps and the community's reaction? I thought people wanted changes in maps like First Light. What do you guys think of First Light? I don't think anyone asked for First Light, but I I didn't. I honestly didn't mind it. I had to just accept that each run was going to be like an hour, 30 minutes. And uh, when it did get, the times that it got unfun was when you were playing against like when you got to the really competitive stage where people were sitting way in the back, 
spread out all over and you're like, then you're literally playing hide and seek. You, you don't know where they are. You're trying to find them. They're sitting behind a rock at the back of the map with their snipers out and you're like, oh, oh, okay. That's good. But I, I, I honestly, I didn't mind it at all. It was a nice uh, change from the shotguns did, constantly in my face. How did you guys do call outs? <laughs> um, okay, so... So if you spawn at the lower end of the map and like you're looking up through the middle, you know how like there's the two rocks that like exactly what whatever <laughs> yeah that th that is that's called that's point. called shark fin that's called shark fin. I watched Miss um, Five Thousand Watts video where she gave me all the callouts for the map. <laughs> I, I I did do that. Yeah, yeah, that, is, <laughs> that was pretty good. Typically though, it's behind the rock. <laughs> behind, yeah. Yeah. Be or behind yeah. the, the big rock, rock. in your left. The hill, the old. Old turret, old turret. <laughs> yeah, I exactly. Know I, know know. Right. I didn't play the beta. <laughs> we did like uh, three runs. We did three runs, uh, three different characters, and we just um, ended up calling them like uh, cave side, you know, and uh, um, mm -hmm. and then the, the building bones or whatever that's <laughs> what, junkyard side. Yeah. And then um, and then we just started naming things off of that. But I think we had to work as a team just to identify things. It was a, yeah. I, I had a lot of fun. Um, I, I really enjoyed playing it. Um, it was a, a good change of pace um, from normal trials. I don't like uh, I don't like the, the the shotgun rushing gameplay, and so having something uh, else to do and being able to actually use you know callouts and strategies for closing off uh, players and teammates, and I I, I don't see. I don't. I don't see a slower game pace as a bad thing. I think it's a good thing. So, I enjoyed it very much. I liked it quite a bit too. I I really liked having to learn that map in trials for the first time. Even though I've been playing it for two years, like it was cool. Like seeing that it was you, cool to have sparrows in Trials of Osiris. Trying to mm -hmm. get a sparrow kill in Trials of Osiris was very fun. You know, it was it was a different experience. It reminded me of why the radar is like it is because the game was originally designed with maps that size in mind. It, it was fun. That's true, actually. You've been playing for two years? Like, when was the last time you played that map? Uh, this I mean, I originally or... played it two years ago. Oh, okay. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, sorry. The I was like, Brian, last where, time... where have you been playing this map? <laughs> the last time that map genuinely came up in the rotation was when I, whenever I last reviewed Last Word. For some fucking reason... <laughs> When I was reviewing Last Word, that map was in the rotation for control. It was and in I was an like, Iron Banner rotation not too long ago. Yeah. Was it? And it always yeah. went to time, and like people would just leave. Yeah, people were having a shit fit, because yeah, it always leave, went to time. Yeah. yeah. Be like, oh, we got uh, first light. Well, I guess we're waiting the time, or leaving. Yeah. I think most of the community, like, I, after I started playing it, <laughs> uh, I hated it on Friday, and then on <laughs> Sunday and Monday... It got a little bit better once I just I, I ended up instead of going like sniper rifle lit up because snipers, despite being a long range weapon, aren't really that good uh, <laughs> at long ranges if you use it in the normal manner, like with uh, a short a short zoom scope because mm -hmm. the aim assist fall off just uh, yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, you have to use a longer zoom scope so switch to a longer zoom scope and you'll probably do better. Um, uh, I switched I swapped to. Uh, a Badger CCL with crowd control, perfect balance, and hidden hand. And that did really, really well on that map. And then uh, Trespasser. Because despite this being such a long-range map, all the most of the engagements were still decided by people getting in close. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what, that's mm -hmm. what I ended up finding out when I did all my runs. Yeah. And I think most of the community ended up thinking, you know, I don't think we needed to play Trials on First Light to realize that having a map of that size would end up taking a really fucking long time to get through <laughs> each particular card. So that that's a I you know that's a you problem, right? Most people <laughs> don't really care if it takes an hour and a half to get through a card, right? They're they're there to have some True. fun. Uh, kind of. That's like a that's a very streamer problem. Oh, it took forever to get through each card. Yeah, I couldn't run that many people through, you know. Yeah. I couldn't do that. <laughs> I mean, I really wasn't I had a lot that. of fun. It was just tiring. It was really fucking tiring to, to for me to yeah, go. Yeah, but you, even on Friday, you go at least three times through, right? Each mm -hmm. character. Typically. I mean, that's not everybody's experience. No, it's not, <laughs> but it, it felt longer, and they've... It definitely took longer. There's no doubt about they, it. Uh, 
I in the old Playboy interview where Derek Carroll got interviewed by the the Playboy guy, they asked like, so how come it's so how Great can you have this though. many rounds? How come you have you know th- this many number for a win? How like and it actually came down to time investment, and I think it was made with the time investment or the games were figured out. The average time was on normal size maps, so this was probably a slightly longer than initially expected for the amount of time they were expecting players to invest mm-hmm. into trials. That's what I was basing that off of. Yeah. I thought, I thought, I thought it was a lot of fun. I wouldn't, want, I, I kind of feel like it was like spooky trials. I wouldn't want to see it every week, but it was a cool offshoot. I want now to it's be, been three I, weeks. Of weird be, weeks though. I'm ready for a normal week. <laughs> I, hope I they, wanted to I hope be rotating. Doing it. Yeah. I hope rotating. they keep doing it. I hope they keep trying different stuff and they it's have like, what we consider normal trials. Um, be one, you know, and then, you know, up close and personal and then, you know, distance and just kind of change things around and let us use different guns in different styles. What if they brought out Bastion this week? <laughs> I actually, I think last week I said, you know what, you know what they're probably going to do? They're probably going to go first like Bastion Skyshock for the Trials <laughs> maps. And then, and I then, played, and then I say played on Skyshock. Crossroads. Trials of Osiris, or Elimination. Oh, it's going to be Crossroads. Crazy. Yeah. Incoming crossroads. crossroads. Everyone's yeah. going to be sitting like either side of the map. No team's going to want to move. It's going to be I fantastic. Will say, <laughs> I like changes. I'm all about that stuff. I am not a fan of first light. So having to being forced to play it for trials put me in like a bad mood. I was I, like, no thanks. Uh, the, if it was Bastion though, I actually Bastion's one of my favorite maps, honestly. And I'm really sad that it doesn't pop up anymore. Uh, because that was that's it's actually a really great map, and a lot of people don't get experience that he picked up Destiny after Taken King, and uh, I actually wouldn't mind it if they brought Bastion. <laughs> I love first light. I love being in you know down in a gunfight and being able to jump on your sparrow <laughs> and ride the, ride the hell away. <laughs> This engagement doesn't suit me. I'll see you on yeah. that side of the map. <laughs> <laughs> you know, set the engagement uh, over again. I and then and then honk your your Galahorn uh, um, horn. <laughs> just, One of what? my teammates, Mega, was doing that, and it made me cr- it made me crack up every time he did it. It was hilarious. It's great. It's fun. <laughs> Uh, uh, Brandon Joshi, I personally love sniping. I've been sniping since day one. Do you guys still snipe in the Crucible? If not, why? Not that often, to be perfectly honest with you. I mostly use Sidearm, Trespasser, or Drag's Promise now. That's kind of what I go to. And I'll snipe every now and then. I'm just Then I'm just like, why am I doing this to myself? And then <laughs> I switch. And I can switch to a Sidearm mid, mid-game, because Sidearms. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Yep, uh, so I, I love sniping. It that is how I wish I could play the game. But at some point, I I, I just realize I'm not killing anything. At the entire world is built against snipers. It feels like so. I just have to go. Okay, we're just gonna put that away for now and bring out the trespasser. And I have enjoyed no land on a on a different. Just I've enjoyed using no land beyond. I feel like that. I'm like, okay, I can pick that up and have fun and do pretty good with that. But a regular sniper, yeah, I prefer to use a sidearm. I still, I still use my sniper in uh, um, sixes, and um, I enjoy it. Uh, it's just play. It's just a you know, a little bit more. Uh, it's a different play style. Instead of rushing, instead of um, being more of a up close and personal mid range, mid to close range sniper, I'm, I'm a little bit further back, but I don't use it as often. I've adopted my matador and you know adopted well more like it um <laughs> it's more like a cancerous <laughs> growth more than anything else oh. and it's it's gotten to a point where it's now just like part of me and i i have i've called it a name and and i've just i i it's you know i live with it now Ugh. i love the trials of osiris sniper like oh, i i beautiful. really love that sniper rifle especially on my warlock with the uh Ophidian aspects on uh, so I actually I use it quite a bit. Depending on the trials map, like if it suits it, I'll I'll use it. But in Iron Banner, especially, I'll be using it because there's nobody else on the map sniping. So like every sniper lane is like clear. You just can sit there and wait for shotgunners to run past. I was really refreshing when I got sniped in Iron Banner. I was like, oh, that guy was whoa, what was he that? was scoping down the hallway and he shot me in the head. <laughs> <I'm> trying, <laughs> I'm gonna go right back there sniped? and challenge him with my primary. See if I can make it happen. This is gonna be great. 
And then sure enough, Flinch, he couldn't sign me with the challenge. Yeah. It's too bad. Nick Sterner, what other types of energy weapons would you like to see put into Destiny, Destiny 2, other than fusion rifles? I'd like phasers. <laughs> I'd like to set them in stun. <laughs> I'd like to see more guns like the hard light. You want it like a sleep, a sleep mechanic? <laughs> put somebody to sleep on the ground and be like, hey. Teabagging is so oh, much no. more effective if you're alive to see it happen. <laughs> Oh, and no. Here it comes, Stuffy. <laughs> <laughs> I, I want, I want a weapon that shoots like uh, needles of energy at opponents that like homes in on them. Oh yeah, I and think that's then a direct detonate promise. and then detonates Explodes. later, like Telesto, but they're needles. Yeah, instead of like pop rocks. I like that. If only, if like only. That. Yeah, if only a <laughs> yeah. weapon like that existed. So, you know what would be great also? Some, some like form. something else I could add to that is like a little pistol, but it's like an energy pistol that you have to charge mm. up. And oh, when weird. you release weird. it. Novel idea. Yeah, it kind of has like a tracking bit to it on the enemy mm. and it takes That'd their shield cool. off. And then you switch to another gun and pop them in the head. Can Fun. I get an energy bow? You already have one. Bow. No, one I can use all the time. <laughs> 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 I want to run around with an energy bow. Yeah, I would like that. Energy. Like a yeah, bow and arrow or a crossbow. That'd be Yeah, fun. where's our where's our compound bow <laughs> with energy bullets? That would yep. be amazing. A flamethrower. Flame is energy. A flamethrower would be fun. Yes. That would be cool. Uh, Nick Sterner has a DCP crew thought of having another podcast that covers all sorts of games other than just Destiny. I don't think we about have time. We haven't talked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. tough. It's it's a, it takes time to put it. Everybody's busy. I think we've um, we play other games, but th when we get together and want to talk, we want to talk about this game. Yeah. So yeah. I don't think there's another game that we would do that. For. Uh, and plus, I uh, I'm I'm already calling if we ever do that. Not it on editing that one because <laughs> man. I'll, yeah, <laughs> I do do another podcast on Sundays that's all about mm -hmm. other games, but it's a lot less formal than this one, and it's only an hour long. And where can they find that? Uh, on, on YouTube <laughs> slash Briar Rabbit. <laughs> are we at that point? Are we at that PC point in the show? <laughs> uh, we're getting close, aren't we? What time? Yeah, I think we have going? another five minutes. Yeah. All right, let's do let's let's do rapid fire these questions out. What do you say? Okay, okay. yeah, do let's it. do it. All right, uh, Stephen Ice says Mac or Windows. Mac. Windows. If I'm producing Windows. music, Mac. If I'm doing streaming and video editing, Windows or gaming. That's all I do, so Windows. <laughs> <laughs> Begrudgingly Windows, although I prefer the Mac operating system far more, but I feel like... You're forced. Give, Give it time. time. Give, it time. Give it time, Briar. That's Alex, it. controllers, Xbox or PS4? PS4. I like them both. PS4. Xbox 360, but PS4. Ooh. Xbox Elite. I love that controller. The Elite controller is awesome. Unicron says, Hi all, name collectively the essential improvements. <laughs> this is not a lightning rod question. <laughs> <laughs> name collectively the essential improvements needed for Destiny 2 to be a wow. success PvE and PvP. <laughs> More okay. story. More I'm gonna, PvE stuff. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to suggest More. you go to this More. website called YouTube.com and just search for the game Destiny. Yeah. You will find enough content there to probably watch for the next year, and or That's whenever true. the hell Destiny is supposed Destiny Two is supposed to come My out. My vote is rewritten netcode. Boom, fixes Boom. PvE and PvP. I want ranks. I, I just want ranks and pretty things. I just want, I want private uh, lobbies. Oh, <laughs> damn it! <laughs> I want custom games. That was last year's answer. Custom that was great. Games. <laughs> custom games. <laughs> Uh, James K. Warner, with all the complaints with weapon balancing, would it be wise if Bungie for Destiny 2, if they hid damage values when enemies take damage? No. What? No. Definitely not. Yeah, don't that do that. doesn't solve <laughs> the do problem. That. <laughs> that just hides it. <laughs> yeah, we need, we need to know how much we're doing damage on. Yeah, no, yeah. that's weird. That's a weird suggestion. I've actually thought about one of the things that would be really fucking helpful on Bungie's end. Even though like my entire channel is basically devoted to this, it would be really, really great to to look at like my Matador sixty four and look at the crowd control perk kills this weapon grant bonus damage for a short time. 
How much? How much bonus damage? And how, how much is a short time? <laughs> <laughs> you know what would be really cool? Being able to hit L2 on that fucking perk, and then it brings up another, like, it brings up a different tooltip that has more Magic. detailed shit in there. Brings it up Jeeves. It lasts for the same amount of time as you're supposed to be spending in orbit. Jarvis pops up and is like, hello. Jarvis. Hello, Patrick. Siri, how I long does Crowd Control last? <laughs> I want more detailed weapon perks. Yeah. I want Patrick, more detailed way, it, it, can't be videos, Corta- it. it can't be Cortana because, you know, that's in the other yeah. game. I want more detailed perks, but I completely understand why Bungie has it the way that it is because it's very simple for someone to go, oh, this increases my damage for a short amount of time. That's pretty good. But then there's a bunch of people that want to go, but how much? <laughs> and yeah. so then that, that option would be really fucking great to have in the game. And just by just by fucking it, L L two or something like that, have more. Yeah, you're talking yourself her. right out of a job right now. That's yeah, what I, I dude, I'm completely okay with that. You're, you're talking yourself into a job, Patrick. No, I'm I'm they, talking they myself to. into making my life more easier because then instead of having to put out perks of hey, this is how the transverse of steps work. By the way, the transverse of steps don't work, and then all the comments being filled with oh oh, the way that you tested it didn't work because the transverse of steps don't work when you're crouching and moving forward. They only work side to side and backwards, or. <laughs> They, or if you equip them while the transverse steps are currently on, and if you equip them while you're crouching, then the perk doesn't work at all, but it does work on Siege Engine moving forward. It's going to be really fucking great if some of these perks <laughs> were just a slightly fucking bit more detailed than they currently lightning are. Round. Lightning I just lightning <laughs> round. All right. James K. Question. Warner, with all complaints with weapon balancing. Oh, I just answered that one. Chris, <laughs> if Destiny 2 is a clean slate, what is the importance of getting everything in the game right now if we can't have it later? Enjoyment. So use it right now and then yeah. have fun with what we're currently using. There you go. Exactly. To get into a Think laggy match in the Crucible. Because <laughs> I need a you god don't miss out on those your, your three memories. Yeah. Uh, Josh Gentry, what do you want to see explained or added to the lore in Destiny 2 and why? I want to see dragons. I would love to see dragons. I want to know more about the Ahamkara. That'd be cool. Mm-hmm. More dragons. I want to know. Too. I want to know about Osiris. That's. Mm-hmm. I want to go. I want to go down there. I want to know what's up with that because he agree. says some stuff I, about the speaker, and I want to. I want to explore. He's been that. saying some shit about the speaker for the past like two years now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. A little mm-hmm. over two years. Now you're talking about like, and smelling what you're stepping in. Yeah. I like it. I'll take All those right. answers. <laughs> Evan, why are people arguing matchmaking again? It seems to have popped up out of nowhere. <laughs> Lightning round. <laughs> it's omnipresent. Not. It always exists. It's, it got brought up on the bungee forums is the answer to that. Yeah, yes. that that's true. That's true. Gabrielle Rittner, in your opinion, what's the most gimmicky gun in Destiny? Gimmicky? Gimmicky. Hmm. What's gimmicky, straight up uh, gimmick? The... Oh my god, what is a gimmicky gun? Um, it's a hard question. Yeah, Drake's Promise? Gimmick? <laughs> Dra- Dragon's Breath? Hey, you know how Rocket that's Launch... That's a good is... one. It shoots Napalm now, though. It shoots I'm gonna napalm. go in... Yeah, that's a good one, though. Yeah, that is a good before. One. No time to that explain. Good... I feel like the perk sounds like it's gonna be good, but then it, it's not good at all. It's still good. It's just gimmicky. Gimmicky though. Gimmicky. Mm. Like super gimmicky good advice a, it's was a tough... like that before. Yeah. yeah, super good advice. Sure. That was definitely a gimmick. I don't know, man. That's uh there's there's so many guns that that like are right on the cusp of that. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> a lot of the exotics, to be honest with you, are just this like Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh JB Mega. Do you think, do you all think that Destiny in terms of difficulty is too easy now? No. 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 Yeah, I was going to say you, If you think the game is too easy, then you're probably in the, like, top, top, top. And guess what? It. Guess what? No one cares about you. Yeah, that's good. Mm. Oh, God I, damn I think the game is too easy, <laughs> and I know that nobody cares about me. <laughs> Listen, the majority of the players doesn't cater to you. You are not the mask that they need to sell to. Okay, get over it. No. I am the one. <laughs> I am hurts, one of the ones who laugh. fell in love with the game when it was harder in year one. When PVE was a harder experience in year one, I fell in love with that version of Destiny. And I feel like, and then you got gone. good at the game, and the overall experience has stayed. No, up, I disagree with that same. premise, Patrick. Night because the Nightfall got easier, the yeah. raids got easier. 
I think a lot of stuff got easier. Nightfalls were a lot harder back then. Yeah. Okay. When you couldn't, when you got it's kicked to orbit. Ground, so I'm just, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna keep going off on that one. But all right. Most interesting Korean. I'll ask again, <laughs> laugh out loud. If you could create your own subclass, what perks, nades, and super would you steal from the other classes? How's lightning not a lightning raid? raid. <laughs> all of them. All of them. All of them. Yeah. All Can the I players. have yeah. Shade Step and also Thunderstrike? Yes. And I'd love also to see a, a lightning a, nade. I'd love to yes. see a, uh, a warlock try to Shade Step and the, 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 their skirt like fold up over their head. And they're like, <laughs> like a, it's like a <laughs> hockey fight where they're. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. That's a good visual image. <laughs> uh, uh, e asks Nylon or Steel? For guitar? I, I, mean, well, I like your, your armor choices. <laughs> no, I mean, nylon or steel for guitar is very specific. Uh, your, you know, nylon, points. nylon strings and all that. I mean, I like steel string guitar, but I like both. All right. If that's what for it is. For toothbrushes, I prefer nylon. <laughs> yeah, same. Yeah. <laughs> uh, detail asks vanilla or chocolate? Uh, uh, vanilla. Chocolate. I'm going to go with vanilla also. Chocolate. Ah, uh, we win. <laughs> Amrix, <laughs> based on an article you posted on Destiny player types. I already read, talked about this. Ryan, Tafflinger, I would like to try no spec crates and reward primary kills with special ammo. Oh, okay, no special crates. You earn special ammo by getting primary kills. What do you think? Would that make it snowballing? Although, you, if, I guess if you're then killing with the special ammo, you're not gaining any more special. Unless you have a perk that gives you special ammo off the kill with the special ammo. <laughs> we have to remove those perks. Those perks are gone. <laughs> you pop your super, right. It's a you PvE get nerf ammo. based on PvP. Yeah, yeah. I do, I do think it's a somewhat anyway, interesting so. idea. Hmm. Yeah, I like it the way it is. Uh, Ryan Tafflinger says, I would like to... No, never mind. He already said that. William Bengri... You can change one thing in Destiny, not weapon balance. What do you change and why? Go ahead, Tefty. Say it. Make the people Just drink. Do it. Wait, what was it? <laughs> the net code? <laughs> yeah! <laughs> I heard weapon balance and completely checked out of listening to that one. What? <laughs> yeah, that's why I actually didn't think net code right away. Yeah. If I could change one thing about Destiny, it would be that Destiny 2 comes out sooner. That's a great answer. Love it. <laughs> I want that one. That sounds good. All right. What do you guys think? Are we done? I I think so. We had an hour and like thirty minute discussion on skill based matchmaking. And it was a long discussion. It was, I feel uh, like we really came to a good conclusion too. I think we came and figured out how to fix it. Uh, it's not it's just up to Bungie to take our advice and run with it. Yeah, they just need to watch this and just fix absolutely. it. Absolutely, we nailed it. We nailed fixed. it. it SBMM fixed. Fixed. Stamp of approval. Officially <laughs> fixed. I was thinking about doing a highlighted discussion about skill-based matchmaking and putting that video up because that would probably be pretty cool. But that was basically an hour and a half long discussion about about it. So yeah, you uh, might get accused of double dipping a little bit. I'm gonna double dip a little bit. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna say no on that. So with that out of the way, thank you everyone for watching the eighth episode of the Destiny Community Podcast. If you want to find me, I am Holtzman or Patrick Casey. And you can find me at Holtzman underscore YT on Twitter and other links there too. I'm Briar Rabbit. You can find me on the Briar Rabbit channel on YouTube. Come check out uh, Good Morning Guardians. We've been having a lot of fun with that. Uh, every morning we post news or cool community stuff that other Guardians are up to. Nice. I'm Tefty Teft. You can talk to me at Teft on Twitter. You can follow me on twitch.tv forward slash Tefty Teft and catch uh, stream archives on my YouTube channel as well, Tefty Teft. I'm Miss 5000 Watts. You can find me on Twitch, Twitter, and YouTube at Miss 5000 Watts. And this has been Pope Bear. And you can find me on Twitter at Pope Bear and, uh, you know, harassing these guys in their channels and uh, their chats. So It was not my well. birthday this week. You did. Yeah, you know, <laughs> but it would have been awesome if it was your birthday. So, <laughs> I had a bunch of people. I'm, I'm really happy that no one came in and said, hey, here's a donation for your birthday. Really happy for you. Oh, I've been yeah. like, that would have been really fucking awkward. 
to have to explain no, that. I mean, I think shouldn't it be everybody's opportunity to have a birthday, you know, when it's not more their birthday? Than, more than once per year? Yeah, the queen. Sure. The queen does that. Some people don't get any birthdays. I like to, wow, when, you, when one of you guys show up on my Twitter, uh, you know, line that says that you're streaming, I just send people there with, you know, a message to you. And it just so happened that your message was that it was your birthday. Happy birthday. <laughs> I honestly <laughs> thought it was your birthday. You, you, you couldn't. You couldn't. Uh, we had plenty of discussions about it. it's like, hey, the trials is coming, and it'll be on my birthday. This will be great for this year. Uh, you can. You couldn't. You couldn't times. like. Yeah, you, know, you couldn't pull, pull that prank on me if we're at a restaurant or something. So I can get like a free dessert at the very.